making sure we're actually live everywhere. Okay. Looks like we're doing great. Why does it not show me? It doesn't matter. He's all good. As long as we're actually live, all good. It's so strange to me because, like, I'm using the same platform for two different streams, but the settings are a little bit different on each one, and I don't know why. <laughs> Technology is weird. That is something I have come to understand. Okay. So, have any of you guys checked out Immortals of Avium on PS Plus? It is currently included in the PS Plus Instant Games Collection, so if you have a subscription, any level of subscription to PlayStation Plus, you can get this game. Uh, just claim it, and then you get to keep it for as long as you keep your PlayStation Plus sub. Um, you can also try the free trial on PlayStation or Xbox. There's free trial on both platforms. And if you want to purchase the game so that you have it as yours forever, you actually get a 5% bonus discount at the end of the free trials also the free demo on steam so if you're curious if you've heard that the game is a little bit resource hungry which it is i won't lie any ue5 game is um but we have optimized it enough that we could lower the pc specs a little bit a while ago actually and we kind of just didn't publicize it that much um so if you were unsure if your system could play this game know that a lot more systems can actually run it just fine now and there's a free pc demo so you can try the demo make sure you're happy with how it runs and then get an extra discount if you want to buy it so that's pretty cool you got this on ps5 now that's so cool kurt the gamer i'm so glad you're enjoying it that's awesome good morning vapen good morning Hilmi. how are you guys i'm so glad that people are more people are getting to try it it makes me so incredibly happy it makes all of us at the studio so incredibly happy that's like all we want is for you guys to try it, decide for yourselves, hopefully enjoy it. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so uh, when we left off, we had fought the good fight inside the giant Colossus. I'm like, why is my keyboard not working? Because I pl plugged it into the wrong computer. <laughs> I used the same... Um... There's a cat. I used the same self-built keyboard that I showed you guys last time, this little guy right here, uh, to play games and to edit videos. And so I just have two connectors on my desk and just disconnect it and connect it to the other thing. I know I could have a KVM switch, but I already have like four KVM switches <laughs> for various devices <laughs> on my desk. So honestly, it's just easier to just swap the cable. The only problem is when I forget. <laughs> Uh, I love when technology works. All right. So uh, we fought the good fight inside this giant colossus, which, if you missed it, is basically a ginormous war machine. Like, this really gives you a good sense of the scale of how large this entity actually is. I'm trying to give you guys a good view, but the sun... <laughs> The beautiful in-game sun it is refusing to let me. But you get the idea, like, look at this incredible mechanized being um, literally standing in the water, moving through the water while we were fighting inside the Colossus. How freaking crazy is that? I, that will never cease to blow my mind. Because when you first start playing the game, you see the Colossal, uh, you see, like, versions of the Colossal, um, other versions of it, uh, just kind of all over the place. You see ruined versions as you move through different parts of the game, um, like, with moss growing on them. Because these are left over from an ancient civilization, right? But then you get to ride one and fight inside of it and on it. It's just crazy. So crazy. Okay. Uh, I know we have to speak to Kirkin, but I want to see what he has to say. Sorry, I can't chat right now. 
Mostly because I wanted to make sure the game was loud enough. Okay. All right. Speak to Kirken in the war chamber. To the war chamber we go. Okay. Him. One second. If my technology would cooperate with me today, I would be so happy. All right, there we go. Okay. Is there any affiliate link before you hit buy of Immortals of Avium on Steam? No, Corey, thank you. I actually work for the studio, so that would be pretty unfair. <laughs> they already pay me. <laughs> so, um, but thank you for asking. I really, really appreciate it. If you ever um, purchase anything on the Epic Game Store, my code there is Tessichka, just like my Twitch name. Um, it should be up here as well. Um, but yeah, no affiliate links for Immortals of Avium because he's my game. I'm on the dev team. It's crazy. <laughs> it's super crazy. They always tell me that I'm also a developer, even though I'm on the marketing team, which I do feel that because I feel like we... Uh, like as as community content people and as community people in general are so kind of aware of what you guys are saying and it's part of our job to relay sort of the really, really good, useful, constructive criticisms to our devs so that they can make positive changes. And that's always really fun to do because we're players too. And um, I think it's an honor to be kind of the bridge between devs and players as much as I can be. Jojo, how are you doing? Thank you so much for the 113 months. I appreciate it so much. You're incredible to do that. I hope you're doing so, so well. It has been a long time. I'm doing okay. Of course I remember you. Oh my God. Been sub for just, you know, I don't even know how long. How long is 113 months? Something like 10 years. Who are you again? <laughs> Thank you so much. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're incredible. I could not forget you. Even if I was gone for 10 years, which I would never do. I would never not stream for that long because I would miss you guys way too much. Two months was too long not to stream. But um, I'm back. So for anyone that's wondering that ha maybe hasn't been here in the last couple weeks, I did come back again. I know I said I was coming back a few months ago, but then I had to have a second hip surgery. So um, now I'm really back. Uh, to regular streaming basically on my twitch channel i stream uh every right now it's every monday and wednesday i think i'm gonna stick with mondays and wednesdays for now um i may go back to tuesdays and thursdays but mondays and wednesdays currently around 10 a.m eastern and then uh also saturdays the time on saturdays will kind of vary sometimes it'll be a little early in the day sometimes it'll be a little later in the day um but stay tuned to my discord or twitter uh, at test games to kind of know when I stream on Saturdays, um, but they'll always I'll always do my best to do a stream on Saturday or on a Sunday if I, for some reason I can't stream on Saturday. That's kind of how I'm rolling. This is the front. right, Aaron. Hi, the by the way. The lights army musters there, ready for the big push. I've run through the war games countless times. When Sandrak had the Binding Stone, our chances were slim to none. All these soldiers, when you look at them, Jack. I would have had a problem see? even if I wasn't a runner, Herathan. I, I um, know you want me to say I see loyalty uh, hi. Or, or, duty see or something like that. All right, that way I can step into some irony or there is HDR on PS5 to... now. Yep. Look, I know you're using this as some kind of preamble to tell me you're angry with me. I am goddamn furious. I'm sorry. I got to She's the shrine. Kind of scary in this cutscene, like in the best way. I, I know, I know, no, Herathian. It's all good. It's all good. There wasn't a choice. I'm sensitive about it. Who I'm told sorry. You there was a choice. My um Zendara, very sweet dad gave me a little bit of a hard time about it yesterday. But and say, Make it up as you go I just told him no, sir. would he listen if somebody told him to stop king and he said no. Then why is it in my You gotta do what makes you happy, right? I gave no indication that we were to deviate Thank from Thank you, Rathu. No complications. Yeah, so it was, um, me that you're it's just kind of a long recovery, but luckily surgery went her? fine. I I'm feeling it. good. I'm Train doing much better now than Jack. I was, like, over the last okay. few months. Okay, okay. If Matt, hello, how are thing, you? That right there, 
is unnecessary with that right there. I got us control of the ultimate weapon, and we can roll right now into Rashan by ourselves and force their surrender Make without sure firing I have a shot. All the windows oh, I need. you've got oh. it all worked out. I didn't realize that. Am I the only one in the room that sees the last 24 hours as an unbelievable victory? I mean, what part of Ultimate Weapon don't you like? The part where it's a corrupted Aristan artifact, Jack. When we all know Aristan is really just another word for Did weapons from yesteryear that we are absolutely unprepared it. for. Maybe you're unprepared. And you aren't? When I found you, the only thing you were prepared for was exploding and taking the rest of Saren with you. The last time I talked with Sandrak, he pulled the same you wouldn't exist without me yeah. lecture you are. So you're a little late no, to I the party, sir. You will go back to the Shrine Forge and get the mark you were ordered to in the first place. Can't do it. And then you will come back here and destroy this thing. Oh. No, I'm, I'm being for real. I, I can't. The machine, it... Well, it, it broke. Don't fuck with me, Jack. Are you serious right now? I'm not. And I am. All right? And I can control it. Why can't you see Just that? Just re thing all of my it. stuff. 113 no months is a little over nine and a quarter Sandra years. Really wow, thank you for looking it up, it. Aaron. That is what such then? a crazy amount of time. I'm so glad to see people coming back from Take basically when I first started, which is just Take it to so the incredible. Goddamn Jojo, bolt. you're incredible. Hey, Dark Shooter, how are you doing? It's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. My hip is good. It's doing better, Matt. Um, it's still not 100%. Like, it takes, they say it takes about a year after surgery to, like, fully be able to start, like, pushing again and, like, just be really good and that's if you do all of your pt and you really take good care of it and you don't overdo it which that's my downfall um i do everything like every single thing the doctors tell me to do it's the things the doctors tell me not to do that i struggle with <laughs> pretty much uh we must secure the binding stone even though perkins just really really mad at us right now Sounds good, Jojo. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Sports shooting. <laughs> oh, wait, you found a hobby for yourself that's sports shooting. That's really cool, Harathian. How, how does that work? I wonder if that's similar to what Rob used to do. Um, do, you, do you, like, just participate in competitions and you have to, you get judged on, like, your accuracy and speed and stuff like that versus other people? That's so cool. I've talked about something like that at one point a long time ago. Uh, hey, paranormal video gamer. I'm good. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Like I said, it's been it's been a very tricky few months for me just because so I, I had to stop running a little bit before surgery like that. So I had the same surgery on my left hip last year. And with that one, I was able to keep running because I was in a lot of pain, but like Honestly, running made it feel better while I was running than it would make it much worse after. But, but my mental health and my physical just feeling while I was running was still good enough that I could like run basically. I ran the day before surgery. I ran like six miles the day before surgery. <laughs> I was like, this is my last chance. Um, and it was fine. Um, but then with this hip, with the right hip, I couldn't do that because my knee was also not doing great. Um, because of all of the hip issues. So I just couldn't run. Like, I think I had to stop running a couple of weeks before surgery. Um, and it's a little bit longer of a process coming back wait? also because of the I knee. And because this hip off. was a little bit worse off me a new one. No, internally. Up, so right it's just a little bit of a less nice for me process coming back. <laughs> um, I haven't been able to get outside as much as I kind of need to for my mental health but it's getting much better like every day it's getting better i'm getting to go outside more um i went on a long bike ride yesterday that i really needed it was really good um i'm allowed to be on a normal bike i don't have to be on the tricycle anymore um but my my bike is actually currently broken <laughs> so i'm still using the tricycle for a little bit longer um but we're gonna fix it soon my shifter is broken and my seat post is broken so we're going to take care of that real soon. 
and then I'll be back on the regular bike, which will be nice, because then we can like do more, do more fun adventures. Oh, paranormal. I totally understand it's not for everyone. But for me, it just brings me so much okay, what's joy. The deal? You two. And it also balances my move. Brain Room. chemistry and wards. my hormones. Remember when Sandrak breached Trust the me. marathon that one time? <laughs> me off running is just not as and afterwards it was up to me to good of a human. <laughs> enchantments against Roshanian magic. Yeah. Well, they worked. Who the hell is Luna, Jack? Just stop, Luna. Rashawn doesn't have its own colors. <laughs> How can you even ask me that? What is it? Some kind of spectral projection? The real question is, who are you communicating with? Wait, uh, are you spying on me? Are you spying on us? Is this Luna a Rashanian agent? No! Yes. Oh my gosh, Zen! That's so cool! I'm Sarah. so glad she feels she that way about it. I'm sure her recovery Turns from out. new replacements was really tough. Look, but 15 years so later, she says it's the best thing Luna's, she's ever done. That's the fantastic. Friend you say is dead, which is very that, like, so very gives me so much hope. <laughs> she's a agent. That's really Worse. cool. Good for her. She's the hand of Sandrak. Oh, do me a favor. I know, I know. Target shooting more. Oh, I interesting. Swear, cool. I was going to tell you. You already kind of knew. You noticed me looking at her in one of our and She can hear our mission That's really briefings. neat, Herathian. No, no. Uh, at least she says she can. And I believe her. Because when we mind link or whatever, I can't see or hear anything around her either. It's not... It's a it's a corrupted spell, Devin. Not some kind of covert intelligence device thing. I, I promise. Daddy has cast a Rasharnian spell. Oh no, paranormal! I'm so, so sorry. We could walk around in each other's heads. And I understand. Somehow. I totally, totally understand. I didn't say anything because I wasn't sure what to do. I thought maybe I could convince her of something I hadn't come up with yet. All right, it, it's messy. But I was never going to let her hurt us. You said she killed Thaddeus. Well, I was never going to let her hurt us after that. <laughs> Devin, come on. She didn't interfere in the deep mirror. She hasn't come after us since this whole mind fuckery stuff happened. And now that Sandrak's dead, we can stop it. Just stop. I think you should leave. Sounds good, her at the end. Thank okay. you so much. I'll uh be in my room. The Palathon. You should leave the Palathon. This is bad, Jack. You're serious. Whatever I decide to tell Kirken, I'll I'll let you know before Have it, I... having Devin angry at us is like the worst feeling because he's so wholesome and good. It just feels really bad. Thank you, Rathian. Thank you so much. Yeah, my hips are kind of a weird situation because they're, I mean, it's highly likely that what caused it was at least a little bit genetic because it was bilateral, right? Both my hips had the same exact issue. Um, so hopefully now that that issue has been resolved, it won't reoccur. I have a very, very good doctor, so that's the hope. <laughs> Um, but also, I'm going to be doing Luna, physical therapy for, like, the rest of my I, life just to make sure that they're really strong and all of the, we need to like, talk. little stabilizing we, muscles uh, are just supporting show up. the rest hey, of it. Kid, fancy that. Whoa! Just about to reach out. Bet you some Thaddeus is alive! Cross. Thaddeus? Don't get spooked now. I ain't a ghost. Turns out... Something went wrong yeah, with the paranormal, 100%. Hey, now, that spell would have worked just fine. Nobody's perfect. That's just part of being human. Now, I keep getting right? visions of you and, that girl and like I said, my issue was a little bit genetic because well, it's exactly the same overgrowth of bone on both sides. Well, so you just know everything about everything. Just didn't I know about didn't it before. Know you were alive. <laughs> I've been telling everybody you were killed. Thank Sorry you, paranormal. Sits me better that That's way, the hard part for me. I've been getting a little long is in the shadow lately. Holding back. I just want to run forever. Me, you know? It's so bad. Sorry. You're downloading I IOE now? Oh my gosh, Corey! Go fellow game dev supporting fellow devs. Sandra. That's so nice. Man, Thank you. I hope you have up. so much fun with it. Hey, Minion, how are you doing? It's great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I hope your morning is going so well. Thank you, Corey. I hope you guys have so much fun with it. If you have any questions, 
about the game at all, definitely feel free to ask. Um, if you have any questions about game dev, I definitely won't be able to answer every question because I don't know everything, um, but I will answer whatever I can. And anything that I can't answer, as soon as the devs, the other devs get here, maybe they can answer or we can ask someone, we can find out for you guys. Um, I don't actually need to do anything, do I? I might want to upgrade. Uh, can I? Do I have the resources? Oh, I do. I have quite a few resources. All right, then. Yes. This is my favorite piece of gear in the game, I think, is God's gear. It's so satisfying to use. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just gonna max it. Why not? Why not? Right? Uh. Okay. Genetic was born with too much cartilage in both hip joints. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So like I had not too much cartilage though. I had too much bone, so not the same thing. But um, I basically had impingement on like both sides on the ball side and the, I'm sorry, on the ball side and the socket side. Um, of the joint so like the too much bone was rubbing up against the little i'm trying to think of layman's terms words to explain something that i only know medical term words for <laughs> basically your labrum which is like the connective tissue that holds the joint together um and contains all the good stuff inside that kind of makes sense um it, it's really easy to tear that um and lots of people live with tears and don't have issues um but mine probably happened when I was younger like it could have happened skiing because I grew up skiing like all the time um in Russia and here and then I also did gymnastics when I was a kid who knows I have also just like been standing still at a barbecue and fallen over and twisted my ankle so badly that I couldn't walk for months so because I'm a doofus so literally the injuries could have happened like at any point from it for any reason and I wouldn't have even known until I had run on it for a long time and it started to cause problems right so but now they're fixed so I just gotta slowly very slowly get them stronger and then get out there again slowly <laughs> very slowly okay uh I don't know if I really should be upgrading this because I never use it, but I'll upgrade it a little. Same with the Nightstorm. I probably use the Nightstorm more, so I'll probably upgrade this a little bit more. I probably could max these at this point. I have so much gold. I didn't realize how much gold I had. I feel like at the start of the last stream, I had not enough gold to purchase to craft uh, health or mana packs, and those were only like 50 to 100,000. And now I have a lot more in one stream. That's pretty impressive. Stand still, falls over. Who put that there? <laughs> That's exactly it, minion. Oh man. Uh, basically your bone is destroying your, car your cartilage because there's too much bone growing in the cartilage. Most likely, yeah, exactly. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, so we have a little bit of a reverse problem. Well, I'm I'm really, really, I hope that yours doesn't cause you any pain and that you're able to do the activities that you love or to find activities that you love. Because honestly, it's not necessarily running that is the most important thing. Like for me, that's just what I got addicted to and it's what I love and nothing else is quite the same. But the thing that I love about it is just moving outside, like at some small speed. I don't want to go super fast or anything, obviously, but just like moving through nature and getting my heart rate up just enough that it doesn't feel really, really tough, but that I feel like I'm moving. And at the end of it, I feel like I've moved. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, because it just makes it it makes so many good brain chemicals for me that i honestly don't function the same without them uh okay i don't need to craft anything i just need to upgrade what i've got 
Um, but I don't have enough resources anymore. Oh, I'm missing legendary essence. Okay. Okay. That's fine. These are pretty upgraded already, though. And I'm sure I'll get more resources soon. Okay, onwards. We're meeting Thaddeus back at his fortress. Okay, we might do this puzzle later. Wait, where am I going? I'm going this way. I love this whole area. By the way, it's just, I just want to run around it for a second. It's so pretty. Yesterday, uh, during my bike ride, I was just like looking around in awe of spring and how like all the trees have little tiny, like tiny baby branches sticking out of them, growing just all over the place. And there's just like new green growth everywhere. Really, really cool. I love spring. Spring is awesome. <laughs> I love seeing it in game too. I don't know if you guys are aware, but a ton of our plants uh, and just flora and trees and things like that are all, um, not all, but a lot of them in Immortals of Avium are based on real world endangered plant life. Um, which I just think is so cool. It's a way to kind of preserve those things in digital form. You used to love running and then one day you woke up and was in a lot of pain. Oh no. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you had to go through that. Your exercise is more sporadic with either a chair gym or some three uh, kilogram weights, but then there's plain old walking. Yeah, walking is really nice. Walking is really, really nice. Oh, I'm gonna die a little bit. Um. Whoa. Uh. Where did, okay. Did I get them all? Not quite. Oh, you're gonna kill me. There we go. Ah, aim for the head. <laughs> oh. Oh, almost. Did you go? Why am I so low on health? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Aiming for the head is a pretty sound strategy, right? Right? Given how the shrouded realm and all works, I wonder if we'll be able to bring back extinct species in a DLC or a sequel. That would be so cool. Because there are extinct species in the game as well, right? So um, we talked about this during the last stream. Uh, Julia and Bogan were pointing out some of the really cool, beautiful creatures that Kirkin was painting kind of in that um, part of the Palathon where we were talking with her and all of those creatures are extinct but who knows what's possible if we can save Avium close the wound get magic back in balance all that that would be really special and amazing I think it's Now we get to hang out with Rook Final and Thaddeus. Show. How badass is that? Hey, kid. Sit a spell. Gentlemen, it's good to see you alive, Thaddeus. Uh, how did you... How's her for later? We gotta talk. God damn. 
You've been to the Shrouded Realm again. Yeah. Every time I'm near a font when it gets absorbed, I just shift over there. Then I see the Pentasod and pow, I'm back. Huh. Pentasod must like Time it. travel? Oh my god. I don't normally do that. As a general rule, crossing over is a one-way street. This absorbed font you're talking about. It happened to be where you think you saw Sandrak die? Rhetorical question, kid. It was. That's how Sandrak got himself into the Shrouded Realm. <coughs> uh, do what now? Well, there was likely a tiny hole left there where the font was. A sliver lingering a bit between worlds. Probably crawled his mangy ass through it in the nick of time. Lucky some bitch. Back up. What makes you think Sandrak went to the Shrouded Realm? <laughs> yeah, he paranormal, back right? Out. Recently, he's close by. He too. actually is a really nice guy. I can guy. smell him. There's a snuffed out fawn over here in Kelpis. That's where he probably is. Take this. Hey, Ooze, It'll good bring morning. You right to him. I figure he'll be weak, convalescing, and whatnot. He ain't moved from what we can gather. Pulling himself back, probably about tore him to shreds. Why not use the font that would have taken him to Rasharn? Rasharn's a dangerous place for a tyrant showing weakness. Sandrak has enemies at court. He's smart to avoid him if he can. All right then. Round three. Sandrak will have summoned his personal guard to watch over him. You won't be able to avoid him. You know what that means, right? The girl. She'll be there alongside all your unfinished business. Thanks, guys. I'd ask you to help, but yeah, you would have offered I by don't now. remember the actor's yeah, name. I'm still on the man after is. getting gut shot He's really by your great, aforementioned though. friend. And my kind live in a cave for a reason, kid. Uh, I can look that out up there. For you. We tend to get killed by folks less enlightened than yourself. But good luck, and make it hurt. Nick Forain. Before you leave, kid, hit up that spell altar. I don't know him, but he does such a name. good job. He's awesome. Like, really, truly. He's one of my favorite characters. I have a hard time choosing a favorite, but definitely Rook, Thaddeus, Kenzie, and Zendara are probably my all-time favorites. And Devin. I really like Devin, too. Yeah, it's really hard to choose a favorite character in this game. <laughs> I'm like trying to think about it, but it's it's hard to pick one. They're all so cool. Yay, we're about to have Super join us. Cool, cool, cool. We have a super, or we're about to have a super. Just a moment. There we go. Hey, super. So interesting because it's not. Showing me. Super in the room. But the embed is working. Can you hear me okay, Super? Might have to leave and come back. <laughs> I've had this open for a couple of days, so maybe something funky is going on. There we go. Yay! Hello. Yay! Hello. Yeah, I just had to leave and come back. Sorry about that. How is your morning going? It's going really well. How are you? Awesome. Also going very well. We have discovered that Thaddeus is alive, and we're back oh, yeah. in his cool as fudge fortress. <laughs> just hanging out with him and Rook, two of my favorite with characters. A, with a hot tub. Yeah. Hot tub <laughs> yeah. Scene. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's so great. <laughs> this room, whoever came up with it, is a genius. Like, if I was Thaddeus's age, and I had my own fortress, I would have a giant 
bar slash library slash hot tub room too. <laughs> Why not? Totally. <laughs> I love totally. the design. If I was gonna, I mean, like, if you're gonna live in a volcano, you better have a hot tub. Right, right. Like. <laughs> No echo this time. Yeah, that was totally my yeah. fault, Aaron. I I just I love the devs so much. I had them coming through the audio twice. <laughs> yeah, I finally got it worked out. It's all good. Yeah. Thing is great. We're using a get, cool. Uh, sorry. I'm trying to get all the tabs. Oh yes, of yes. Chat up so that I can pay attention to everyone. Yeah. For some reason, so restream is supposed to actually combine them but it doesn't like to actually combine them. Like the, the restream chat only shows Twitch chat for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, there we go. That's the one I was missing was Twitch. Yeah. Yeah, we had a really busy weekend on Twitch. There were lots of people streaming. Nice. I was really happy. Yeah. I'm so glad that more people are getting to try it for themselves. There's so many comments on socials from people that just like, I had no idea this game existed. I'm so glad it's on PS Plus. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I played, I, I watched a bunch of streamers this weekend because I love watching streamers. And uh, I, it's funny, if you're playing this game on Twitch, there's a good chance I'm going to show What's up. the deal with this stream. Though? It's a ward breaker. <laughs> with all these like me, little streamers with like 10 viewers. All That's of a sudden, get a dev awesome. show up and they're like Guess freaking out. Spell, like, oh my god, a dev showed up in my game. And it's like, <laughs> I've probably showed up and talked to you and been like, yeah, I'm a dev. Uh, probably 40 streamers at least. Like, I, I do it a lot. That's um, so cool. Yeah. I know as a streamer, especially a baby streamer, that can be a baby streamer sounds so weird, but like as a newer streamer, it's, yeah. it's definitely nerve wracking, but also a huge honor. And just makes you so inspired. Talking to devs is like the most inspirational thing ever. If you're a content creator or you just love video games in general. <laughs> I love geeking out about video games with you guys. Quick question. You're playing on PS5 and you're wondering if the upcoming update will help with frame rate if your TV doesn't support a uh, variable refresh rate. I believe yes, because it should improve performance across the board. But maybe Super can answer that a little bit further. I'm time, not as an expert on um, like DLSS and stuff and all the frame gen. Like I, that's not my area. But uh, as right far now, as I please. understand it, this is going to sound the crazy. point of you it is to, to make the game me. smoother. Um, I just spoke it, with it generates frames between you're frames. Right, right, right. Listen, so Sandra if you're running 30 right. frames per second, right. it but feels like 60. You if you're running 60 frames per second, it feels like 120. With, um, with very little I'm visual distortion. So way. that's what I understand it's supposed to do. So hopefully if you're having uh, a little bit of frame dips, like it should smooth it out because essentially what it's saying is we can simulate the game a little bit less often and generate the frames for less um, less like overall total hardware capacity so hopefully yeah it should um it should uh help a bit oh very very cool thank you for explaining but yeah that's the job I, like i'm not an expert on it mark is gonna be the one who's gonna be able to answer that stuff better than me yeah um, he knows a lot more about that than i do yeah we can we can ask him for more details later but yeah the the point of all of these updates is to improve performance so hopefully <laughs> yeah uh, we don't have a date for it yet, Cleed, unfortunately. I, I know a lot of people are like, when is the update? And if if we had a for certain time that we felt comfortable promising, we would do it, but we can't do that. So Yeah, you know, we gotta clear QA. <laughs> we gotta, you know, there's we gotta make sure we get past any unexpected things. So if we promise a date and then we find a crash, like you we're gonna push back for the crash and we don't wanna please, promise something. But it's you know we're sure. all hard at work, so yeah. It will come as quickly me. as you know we can possibly deliver it to you guys. Of course, Clean. We literally, at the end of the last stream, were like, let's do it again. That was way too much fun. It was, yeah. <laughs> Getting Brett on, having the CEO on the live stream was really fun. Because, yeah. like, there's some questions about where the story comes from. You know, I could talk about combat 
I could talk about a lot of design principles that we followed or thought about and talked about, but these is where a lot of the big inspirations came from, where the big ideas came from. You know, this was really his, his passion project. And so, you know, having him here to talk just to really gotta takes find it up to the next level. Ooh, <laughs> love this area. This is such a hard fight. It's so, it so beautiful. Fun. Yeah. I love Kalthas. Like the contrast love, love. of the red and the snow and the mountains is just so cool. Um, but yeah, Brett is going to join us at some point later today as well. But that'll be fun. Oh, hey. Eruption. <laughs> hey, Deathcrawler. No, um, no major things that you might have missed. We did hang out with, we hung out with Thaddeus and uh, Rook for a little bit. So you did miss that. But you can always rewatch the VOD if you want. <laughs> or play the game. That, that also works. Chat with them as much as you would like. Time burst is the freaking best. It just makes everything so much easier. It's yeah, it works on everybody too. I yeah. Think. Um, oh 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 I no! Think that it really. <laughs> it it's really, so um, easy. Whoops, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, it it really does make such a huge difference. And like, one of the things that I I don't know if I'm gonna get around to it in this patch, but I wanted to is make it easier to find. Um, yeah. you know, there's that like crystal in the hole in the Shrine Forge that you have to shoot, yeah. and it's like it's a blue light, the blue crystal in a blue room, and it's like you just can't see it. And I just like yeah. think we might go in and just if I just flip the crystal to green instead, it will be so much easier to see, and I think we will discover time because like vortex is pretty easy to find, right? Like. You, yeah. If you're just like looking around even a little bit, you're gonna find portals. But like, uh, Heimburst is just obscure, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah. All right, I'm a little I was bit watching somebody mode. who, who is, uh, playing New Game Plus on their first playthrough, or, uh, Grand Magnus on their first, first time playing the game. And it was like, they have a death counter, you know, and they were on health for it. Oh my god. So this is the beginning of the game, and they were at 38 deaths. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they died to the one worm by itself. The one oh no. In the health for it. Oh <laughs> no. People have a like, lot of trouble with these. I actually didn't realize how much trouble people have with these. I guess I did too, initially, especially when they do this. Oh, the big ones? The big ones are hard. Yeah. The big ones are very hard. You know, um, that dive, that dive just really makes them so cool. Um, the the concept art for the Layla Dawn has been around for years. It was around before I started. But really? They hadn't actually been built yet. And so, you know, we had, like, that really cool picture that you see had been done. Uh -huh. But the actual, like, what they were going to play like, we didn't, we didn't know. And... Um, I, I like scuba diving and moray eels are super cool the way they like kind of poke out of the you ever see them like they'll come out of a um a reef and they'll kind of like have their tail still stuck in the reef and they'll kind of bob around and, like look for stuff and um there's actually this youtube video out there of a moray eel attacking a diver like like the diver's like above the reef and it comes up out of the reef and like swims up and tries to bite him and what? it's like super terrifying because they get these giant jaws oh my god and i remember i remember finding that video and sending it to the animation team it's like we need this we need this like scary wiggly movement that this <laughs> thing does and that's how that dive kind of came about was that's that, so like, cool and um yeah it was like really inspired by like these like like they're really freaky looking like they're really cool and then like that you know the design already kind of echoes the way their body looks yeah and so then it was like uh you know um getting it to to move correctly and they um 
yeah, they came out really good. Like, yeah. I, I, they're just freaky looking, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're terrifying. And especially when you don't know where they're coming from because they keep moving and you they don't have a yeah, way to slow them down. Very, they're very evasive. Like, if you're looking at them, they're going to run away. So, like, it... <laughs> That's that's one of those things about the game is uh, all the enemies know if you're looking at them or not, and so they have like reactions based on whether you're aiming at them, which is why swords, you know, archers will jump away at the last moment. So you know you're looking; they're watching you. So. Ah, this is gonna hurt. Uh, Phil asked, "I wanted what do ascensions do? Ascensions are talent points." So if you have a talent tree in your pause menu on PlayStation, it's the middle button, that's the big, big button. Um, you go to the talent screen and then there are talents you can buy. Uh, and actually, if you aren't buying your talents, um, you're going to fall behind the power curve a little bit because we give you, along with this, the, like, the obvious ability that you get out of each one, we give you a little bit of magic power also so you get stronger each time you buy a talent. And so if you... I've seen... You know, plenty of people who find themselves with like 14, 16 unspent talent points because they just haven't been doing it. And they're like, I am really struggling. And it's like, oh, you should spend your talent points. And then they spend their talent points. And they're like, I'm doing really well. So uh, it, uh. it makes it really big difference. Um, <laughs> if the game feels uh, hard, check your talent screen. Yeah, check your talent screen. Um, and also, like, uh, you know, there's a couple, some really high impact talents in the list. There's some talents in there that really make um, large, large amounts of benefit to your survivability. Um, you know, there's there's one in the green tree where you take, you get 25% of the damage you take on your shield and health pack. That can be a lifesaver, especially like if you're running low on health packs, you start kind of shield spamming to fill your life bar back up is really helpful. Um, you know, the, the red one for uh, punches break shield punch shred punch that one is like game changer if you're not heavily invested in blue um if you're playing a red focused build uh you can deal with a regeneration pretty easily but shields can be really really hard if you're really focused on red and that one really lets you just like oh pop i'm just gonna punch you and your shield goes away and it's like it's it's a game changer in terms of how strong you are um I think I, I think it's one of those like it, it obviously you need to spend a lot of points to get to it so it's like an investment but like when you get it it can just really change the way that you play the game um yeah that i mean having the freedom also to level up so many more things in new game plus just makes you so op and it feels so good <laughs> it's really yeah, it's really satisfying new game plus has a times 24 xp multiplier Right, so you get twenty times twenty four on all of your essential, all your um. Oh, the word just blanked out of my brain. Um, ascensions. Yeah, but it's the currency for them, the the arcanum. Oh you Times yeah, twenty four yeah. arcanum. Yeah. There's a times twenty four arcanum multiplier. Yeah. Uh, the game is really yeah, good, uh, dark shooter. Also, it's available. Uh, so, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, everything carries over to New Game Plus except for the augments. So you still get hover uh, on the path. You still get the grapple when you go to learn how to write a ley line, right? So the the core, you know, you, st you still have all your spells. You still have all your powers, all your talents, all your gear. Um, there was just a, like, we can't give you hover before you would get hover because then you would be able to get areas you wouldn't be able to get to in the normal progression and it could break progression so it's sort of a um we didn't want to break anything and the safest way to do that was you can't get the refract spell that lets you do the, the laser splitting right until you would get the react in the normal story progression but all your combat spells were there so you know you, you still have all your talent points you still have all your all your gear um all the legend epic and legendary gear gets in new levels of upgrades so it normally only upgrades to four they upgrade to eight instead and they um they get, some of them get like you know higher numbers or new numbers so there's like some gear that'll have like surprise at level seven all of a sudden it gets a new stat it didn't have before so um we got some stuff like that in there too so there's um you know 
being able to have the full talent tree unlocked and in order to being able to uh, upgrade your gear to newer heights and new powers and like um, there's a fair amount of build focused epic gear that there's no legendary replacement for. A good example is there's a green sigil that turns your three of your torrents into one mega missile torrent. Really fun, but it's a it's an epic. And so we said, okay, on New Game Plus, all those epics are going to get new levels also, um, and so that we can make them viable for late game builds. So. Um, Because basically you're starting out in late game. You know, all the enemies are are tuned to the a new difficulty for oh. new game plus. Okay, okay, I see how this works. Yep. <laughs> Hold on, I have to figure out where I need to stand. There we go. There we go. And for this one, uh, Cleed asked on YouTube if we got inspiration from other monsters in games or games when designing creatures in our combat. Um, and we, we definitely have lots of inspirations. Um, you know, we don't, uh, I don't know if we, you know, like we even sort of reference, I don't think it was intentional, but we referenced Doom as being a big inspiration as well. Um, but, uh, a good example is the, I know the Archon, um, the big walker, the crystal eye and laser beam is very much inspired by, uh, some very classic enemies in, you know, the, um, the Sentinels in X-Men Days of Future Past, um, was definitely one of those inspirations that was kind of terrifying and... The Destroyer in the Thor movie, I think, oh. are definitely things that we referenced uh, when we were talking about how it should move and what it should sound like. You know, um, I think that one actually existed. Before, like, I that, that was one of those enemies. You know, some of the enemies, I, I worked on the project for three years of the five. And so when I came on, some of the enemies were already made and some of the enemies were, uh, you know, had only just been like talked about. And so the Archon, the Archer, the Swordsman, the, the Oathbroken um, were some of the enemies that had already existed when I joined the company. And obviously they got huge changes over time as we figured out how to make them good. But, um, you know, like the, the Oathbroken's moveset um, has been around since, since I joined the company. You know, it's been big. <laughs> Obviously, he's gotten a lot smarter. Uh, it's a little more interesting, but um, pretty much all the moves he had are the moves he's had um, since the beginning, since I joined. Him, so. This is so cool. I haven't been inside this in a long time. This is kind of a tricky one to find, and it's oh, easy yeah. to skip. And it's hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to finish it, but I figured I would at least show it to you guys. You can bully Sevens. You can really bully him. The hard part with Sevens is the uh, is the, the ad, when he calls the ads, um, and you have like three Reavers, three Oathbroken coming at you toward the end. Yeah. But uh, Green Magna, you can really just if you get on them, you can bully him. I saw I saw a streamer first try, uh, just annihilate Lucretius. Like <laughs> he didn't even live long enough for his Archons to show up. I was impressed. I mean, he didn't miss once. Like, he was using the burst fire with the, the projectile, and he hit every single shot. So it was whoa. Like, he was able to keep them staggered just completely, like, the whole fight. But it was like, whoa, wow. That was that was too easy. <laughs> there. Where... I always am like lost as to where the green magnet go whenever I fight one. I'm just like, where are you, buddy? That's what I use seeker shards for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where'd he go?
Oh, uh, watching the torrents in the time burst is really cool. Yeah. I think that's basically just what I'm gonna have to use on him. I use one key to just cycle through the different sigils instead of like actually having them set to... I mean, they are still set to specific keys, but I just always cycle right. through and sometimes... Cycle them. Yeah, and sometimes I get it wrong because I'm like, wait, I'm time bursted, so I don't realize where I'm like how many times I've hit the key. <laughs> So happy that he at least leaves a trail. Yeah. Oh. Um. Oh, well, they hit the other one. <laughs> Where did the spikes go? Whoops. Yeah. Oh, I'm I die. love that second explosion so much. Yeah. It's such a cool power. Um, ah. <laughs> okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Damn it! Alright, we're just gonna go for it. And he moves! You butt. Yeah, you got this. You're just totally. <laughs> I'm like so he's focus making, mode. He's making you, yeah, he's making you work for it. But yeah. You can just win. If I had focused more on green magic, it probably would be easier, but because I'm like, I want to put everything into blue. My first playthrough, I was like, green magic all the way. It was very effective, yeah. though. It was super effective. Especially for a first, like, full playthrough. Great. Oh, hello. Hi, friends. Ah! Um. Oh, he's persistent. Yeah, Vortex yeah. isn't going to help you against them. Uh. Okay, okay. They can stand in his own lightning, though. That'll be good. Just let the, let the green magic hurt them. It's always nice. Oh, my God. I should have saved the Dominion! I need to get that armor off first. Yeah. trickier fight than I thought it would be, but it's fine. You got this. You're right. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, maybe not. Oh, I got pretty close. Well, sort of. <laughs> Takes a little bit more concentration than I was prepared for this early in the morning, but that's okay. I'll give it one more try. One more try. Because we do have Sandrak to fight. I'm I'm like not sure if we can make it to the finale today of the game. We could if I sped through it, but I don't want to speed through it. But we'll see. <laughs> you're you're at the fine Sandrak. Yeah. 
right? So you still have to do four more levels. And you got a ways. Yeah. I mean, you can you could push it, but we'd have to. If if when more people start showing up from from Ascendant, <laughs> gonna yeah. get chatty. It's hard to make progress. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, they're immortals. No dying. You don't die, you just... It's a video game. <laughs> okay, hold on. I hit the wrong key before. Oh, they're all clumped together. That yeah, it's so satisfying. Oh my god, it's literally the most satisfying thing ever. Go. Oh, I should have used different magic. Let me use my mana crystal! So hard to follow him. Definitely like using too many things that I don't need to be using. Because I'm hitting the wrong keys. Mm -hmm. But it's fine. My, my technique that I usually use for green magni is to uh, hit them with disrupt and then bash them because disrupt oh. will keep them still just long enough for the bash to connect. And then also if you have the talent that applies corrosion to bash, that's the highest Ow. single damage hit you can do in the game uh, gotcha. is a corroded bash. So if you're trying to take out one of these bosses. Uh, I mean, like, Bash is kind of my go-to for boss. It's also it was my favorite ability, so I kind of overuse it. Gotcha. But... Bash is tricky so, for me to use because I have to be, like, aimed correctly at where I want to go. Mm -hmm. And um, just the way that I move and do things, it can be a little bit tricky. Uh, I think I just have to get the muscle memory for it down properly again. I haven't really used it that much. Oh my god. Ah. <laughs> I love it because it's like, that's my spell. You, what are you doing? Yeah. My spell. <laughs> <laughs> Broken time. Uh, 
Um. What is that thing? That's the um the chaos fisher. Um, oh. The third, the third talent for uh, blast wave is when you cast blast wave, it leaves that chaos fisher behind, and then it will explode after a little while. And what's really fun is you can lash enemies into it too. So like you blast wave, and then you like grab from the guys and lash them back into the explosion. Ah. Um. <clears throat> there's also uh the third talent for bash. Causes a blast wave if your uh, if your attack hits it kills the target Not it hits. What I meant to do. Uh, and that um that gets uh, that gets the benefit of that chaos fissure. So they stack oh. on top of each other. If you're fully maxed out in bash and blast wave, and your bash kills somebody, you get a blast wave, and then the blast wave gets the chaos fissure. So you get like three explosions out of one spell. Really fun. Um, so uh, Paranormal uh, said being able to switch on the fly uh, in like a game like Skyrim where it's one at a time that was a big focus for us uh, we found that every time we had any sort of like spell wheel spell selection anything like that where we you know we made you force your aim or anything like that it just slowed the game down so much and with the amount of sort of like pressure we put on the player with being in your face it's the uh, it always feels better when it's like instant cast. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. I well, was good morning. Very focused mode for a minute there. I guess it's, it's always better when she dies so I can finally say hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's fighting sevens too. Oh, I saw. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I can't leave this undone. I feel like I'm so close. <laughs> Mixa, hello. Thank you so much for the 104 months. That is a totally ridiculous amount of time. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so the first thing I need to do is figure out what I'm going to do. I think using Disrupt more is definitely the, the way to go. That was very effective. Okay. We're going to try one more time. Those both broken at the end absolutely wreck me. That's that's the thing I'm having the trouble with the most, I think. Also, I need to figure out what my bash is actually mapped to. Uh, yes, yeah, five, four normally on the keyboard. So I think I have it set uh, to six. I thought it was here. Let me double check that my mapping is not crazier than I thought it was. Because I tried to do it and it did not work, so <laughs> let's find out. Uh... Oh, that is where it is. That is so impossible to hit. Maybe I can put it somewhere else. Maybe I can put it there. I just put it there. Okay, let's do that. Um, board settings. Bash. Nope, nope, wrong one. That's what I want. Okay. All right, that should be a little bit easier, hopefully. <laughs> hey, Smelter, how are you doing? This is just so Ooh, fun. They perfect. literally just Vortex. you got all of them. Yeah, oh, almost all. <laughs> oh, that one, that one. 
Almost. That was the wrong spell. Whoa. Hi, buddy. I use the wrong spell all the time. It's so bad, especially when I haven't played for like a day or two. I get myself so confused. Oh, hello. That spell so much. It's funny because this entire level just means we have Yeah. Yeah. You know, the lightning is a really good example oh, of go. a hard ability to get right um, in first person. Uh, area effect spells, I think about third person games or something like. Uh, uh, like a dota or something you know you have all sorts of areas where it's like you can't step in this spot it's yeah the common game design right but if in first person you really have to think a lot differently about those kinds of things because you you know it might be underneath your view you might not be able to see it it might be um, you know like you're what direction you're looking uh we had an early uh big flying enemy in the game that we designed at one point that vomited on the ground and then left acid pools in the ground and what happened was we found out that it was like nearly impossible to know where the acid pools were because you had to look up uh, at the enemy the whole time but then the ground was where the danger was and so you'd never know where it was and we ended up just scrapping it actually uh because it didn't it didn't feel good it didn't look good um but it was one of those um it was a really cool design, but then when we actually, you know, we were like, oh, it's so cool. It's going to, like, barf acid on the ground to avoid it. And then it was just like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. Um, so I got oh, my asked God. About... <laughs> yeah, you got him. I got asked about whether I can confirm there will be DLC for future release. Uh, at the moment, there isn't any more DLC um, planned. Uh, we still have uh, some patches coming. Um, but those are mostly technical. Um, so we don't we don't have we we sort of did our DLC in November October. Um, yeah. So the the Echo Lector update that added uh, New Game Plus and added um, the Shatter Fanes, the Echo Lector boss. Um, that was our our sort of free DLC that we were able to to put out. So it's already kind of out. Um, it's already been released basically. Yeah. But it's free. There's no. Um, you know, we're not we're not planning on selling the DLC. So. Yeah, it was included. So that's what added also the Grand Magnus difficulty and New Game yep. Plus. Plus. Cool. That was so awesome. I was not sure I was going to be able to do that. <laughs> Good stuff. We need we, Kenzie DLC. That yes. would be so great. I love her so we much. Need, we do need more. We do need more Kenzie. I agree. She's such a fun character. Her and Rook and Thaddeus and um, Hauser as well. He's a really cool character that I definitely did not like spend anywhere near enough time with early on. <laughs> yeah, I've always wanted just an entire standalone Thaddeus game. Yeah. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely, um, you know, uh, I've been trying to get more Hauser in the game. Uh, like when we were trying to figure out what uh, the post-launch DLC was, you know, uh, before we settled on the Echo Lector and the Shadow Fanes, uh, you know, one of the things we had talked about was like Hauser assassination missions that we talked about doing. And we didn't really, you know, we had to pick one. We only had so much time to work. But, it, you know, wanting more Hauser, I think, is something everybody at the company is like, he's so cool. He's like the David Bowie of Avium. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so accurate. <laughs> um, 
That's exactly who he is. That's perfect. Uh. Oh, I, you know, we would, we absolutely would love to do, um, I think at this point, I don't know if we would necessarily do a sequel. I think the spinoff is more of our speed at this point. I think we've officially said that we're working on a spinoff. I mean, we'd love to do a sequel too, but, yeah. uh, I mean, Brett's got a sequel written. Like he's, he's yeah. already got that laid out. I have so many ideas for what the sequel should be too. I mean, not just combat, but like uh, story. I have so many thoughts about where, where the world should go after after the yeah. end of the beginning. It's just really neat to me. Uh, my, my big pitch instead of the Echo Collector was to do Zendara, Queen of Kalthus. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I almost got Brett convinced on that. And you play as Zendara and you know, everything. Yeah. Power story and everything. They experience leadership through her eyes. Oh, Aaron, every time someone says this game reminds me of Doom, it's like the biggest compliment. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do Doom 2016 in particular uh, is one of my all time favorite games. Uh, I, oh, you know, hello. we didn't we didn't want to like copy. We we're just trying to copy. But uh, one of the things I really wanted was that feeling of um, when you're really clicking in Doom, uh, you really feel like you're just killing it. Like Doom 20. Like my problem with Doom Eternal was that I never feel like I'm good enough at Doom Eternal. I always feel like I'm panicking and running away. Whereas, like, in Doom 2016, I get this sort of power fantasy where I'm like, I am wrecking everything. And uh, I was really trying to get that into this game. And the one thing that Doom Eternal did, um, the Doom and Doom Eternal did really well, is they encourage a sort of stick-forward form of gameplay where you uh, are encouraged to get in your enemy's face, you're encouraged to keep moving, you know, um, we're not a, we're not a cover shooter, and that was a very clear thing for the beginning. And so, one of the, those big inspirations was give you that reason to to not just hide behind no. a wall and go pew pew, pew around a corner. You know, um, is something that was a big focus for us. So. I mean, we die. were constantly <laughs> focused on flow. That was flow. a huge pillar for the engineering combat team. I hope we got it right. I like, <laughs> would love to know what other people think. Uh, it was, uh, again, a, we spent a, well over a year just working on flow. I mean, controls were... Uh, I mean, we went through so many iterations on how you cast your spells. Uh, and, and, on the floor. and I just think about, like, if we had shipped with a spell wheel, how much worse our game would have been. The, that old spell wheel was just awful. We had to hold the triangle to select your spell and then cat was just... All right, this is all trickier than I was expecting it to be today. This is a hard fight. Uh, this, this room is particularly challenging. I, I find it really challenging. Um, I because the... finding the enemies in this room. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you have like those. You know, the it's like it's a giant room with sniper enemies also. Yeah. So, you know, you're like looking at you got multiple blue elementals flitting around as far from you as they can get and taking pot shots and then you get the Archon chasing you around and from far range, you know. Oh. It's definitely like a sniper challenge room. Like Yeah. Okay, that worked out much better <laughs> than the first time. I think I, this is the room Mr. Beast shows up in. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. That's also a fun fight. It's so good if you have Vortex. It's like the best thing ever if you have Vortex by the time you get to that. Yeah. Um, question for viewers. Are you guys seeing any strangeness in the stream? Because my bitrate appears to be really not great all of a sudden. But everything looks okay. Nobody's said anything. So if anybody watching the stream is getting like buffering or anything like that, just let me know. 
It looks fine to me, but I just noticed that my bitrate is like not where it's supposed to be. So it's getting fuzzy during movement. Why is that happening? Seems fine with Mars. Maybe it's just a momentary thing. Oh, we have a Julia jumping in. Woohoo. Cool. Hey, Julia. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Maybe, maybe it was just a momentary thing. It's like green, but it's telling me really low numbers. So I'm like, what is that? Why is the bitrate not cooperating? Technology, friends. Technology is always a little tricky. Why is the door not opening? Did I leave somebody alive? There's a crystal. You have to, there's three crystals. Yeah. To shoot. I think they're right by the door. door. Oh, there's the red one. That one. Where's the blue one? I love these puzzles. They're not that hard, but they always make you look around the environment that much, like that much more, so you just notice more of the coolness. Oh, there it is. There it is. There we go. Are you sure sending them away is a good idea? Hi, Andy. You can't talk me out of this. No one here needs to die. She says hi. But they really do. Oh. Let him live and we'll pull He's our so horses cute. from the front. You have the binding stone. You've won the war. I'll summon He's Nico when he wakes up. <laughs> he listens to my counsel. Sandrak's not uh, the war Rick mom. L. asked about the to FSR be. patch for PS5. He won't let uh, fight a battle. We can't I know win. it's a couple Listen of weeks out. Is that right? You I mean, we still have to go through the search. Um, the world since we were I should know Andrew, within the next day or so. I don't care. I'm asking you to without care. letting the, to make it all of the here. stupid details I'm not supposed to say out loud out. Uh, the Enduring Games magic. and Ascendant and, and AMD are working together to bring the absolute Both most cutting edge version of FSR out. And so, for those of you who who does that uh it, it takes a few iterations of different driver releases and right here you know, different uh dll's for their their various stuff everybody's got a we think this is it and then they run your game and then go Ooh, bug here bad smearing here whatever most yeah. factor didn't work in this area like crap so we're we're in that phase right now where we're just trying to make sure that everything is is high quality because there's a few complex areas in this game. Yeah, and it's, you know, we're tip of the spear on that tech, right? Like, we're the first studio to do it. You're not, you know, like, I don't even think anyone else is slated to catch up to us anytime soon on that one, so. Um, you know. It's a pretty big step forward. They need help. I won't take the advice of someone who is so obviously divided. The binding stone's too far for that. That's awesome, genius. Lost in Space. It to me. What part have I'm you gotten up to myself. so far? Or what's been your favorite part so far? Ah, the Parathon Vault, of course. No, wait! This will give them hope. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love her reaction so much. Holy shit! Ugh. Oh! Ugh. Come on! Devin! Sandrax inside the Palathon. You've got to raise the alarm. What? Oh, That's lost in space. I gotcha. You oh, need dear. for a lot of oh, them. You need what? refract, Portals which you get later over. in the game. Night blades inbound. I'm coming. Uh, so there's a question for Julia. Can you go into detail on what the breakdown was, the technical Devin. limitations, 
creating most of the levels, I mean, they are looking incredible. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad that you're come. enjoying them. Um, yeah, as, as Mark uh, constantly reminds me of, uh, the, the entire art team really likes to pack as much content into these levels as possible, uh, just to add an extra level of environmental storytelling and all of the props and, uh, and the architecture and everything. And the only way that we were really able to push those boundaries is with all of the UE5 technology upgrades on the art side. Um, so Nanite is, uh, is one of the major things. All of our models are Nanite and that just made the asset creation process go so much faster. We were able to just make a lot more content because uh, Nanite handles like there are no LODs, you don't have to manage that. Um, it does a lot of things sort of behind the scene and definitely means that you can really push up the amount of polys on, on every single asset. So really gain some awesome sort of surface breakup and detail. And uh, we still had, there are definitely some hiccups with the whole Nanite process as, as Mark uh, and everyone on the team knows. And so we were able, to, we had to make some adjustments on the fly uh, in the actual editor where we were going in and realizing that Assets don't necessarily need to be five million polys. Um, we can get away with uh, with less, but just the fact of the matter is, Unreal Five kind of allowed us to build out these spaces that much faster. And you know, with Lumen, we are doing into, that. Also, handles a lot of behind the scenes stuff for us. We weren't having to worry about light maps, and um, we built our our levels in such a way that we tried to take advantage of all of the, the new sort of Lumen features and Nanite features. And just, uh, it really, really helped. It, well, first got all of the artists very excited just to uh, to work on with all these bells and whistles, but it just sped up our process significantly and made it so that we could um, be more performant and really push like I don't think that there's been a game that's had this many polygons on screen um, because we were the first on five five one, so that's just been fun to see. One of those uh, cool. where you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much detail. Uh, it's the shelves in the, the library. Oh yeah, all <laughs> yeah. Those all of those are, are books. All those books are all books. I was like, it's not textures. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Like. Yeah, we were able to, yeah, exactly. Like in previous games, we would just make that a texture, but uh, we were able to actually build out all the little details um, and make it, you know, because it just reacts to light much better, uh, having physical geometry. And when you're working with, with Lumen, you're able to just get up really close and see all the undulations in every, yeah, bookshelf or floor tile pattern. And uh, it's just, it's really cool. And done with a pretty small team. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I think a project of this size, we would have had probably twice as many lighters alone, just wow. based on, you know, like the number of people just working yeah, on the lighting might have been like, yeah, we, we probably would have had 10 if we weren't mm -hmm. on Lumen. I mean, it just no. it's yeah i mean uh, it it's one I mean, of those just having where... to run eight hour lighting banks for every level in the game every time you wanted to update something would have been yeah that was just impossible prohibitive. untenable for us yeah is there a bad guy still alive somewhere Ooh. Um, so was the lighting effect easier to maintain or harder based on the engine? Your team did an amazing job on the detail. There are points of the game where it just feels like, uh, you know, lighting is very detailed. Um, definitely Unreal 5 made it easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal Lumen made it a lot easier. Um, obviously there were still plenty of challenges because it's new technology. Um, and, uh, but we, you know, as we learned and we got better, it, it definitely, um, I know Mark said in the last, you know, Mark usually said in the last stream, uh, we couldn't have done the inside outside of the Goliath uh, without it. You know, the, that would have been just such a nightmare of going inside and outside back and forth. Uh, that level is just so insane. Like, that you can see the outside and it moves and then you're inside and it, it's just, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that in any other game. 
Yeah, there's not many. It's a, it's a unique creation that still scares me when I think about having that. <laughs> um, so it's, I, I now know that not everyone is as fluent in all the Unreal terminology and all the game developer stuff. So I'm going to just do a little bit of a background on what we're trying to say about this. So Lumen is Unreal's real-time dynamic lighting system. The way you normally would make a game like this is uh, the lighters would come in and place lights, and then we would run a faking process, which different engines call different things, but basically it would attempt to load the level and process the lights and save off the effect of those lights on everything in the scene. And that as I said, takes hours when we were doing some of the earlier versions, we were spending six to 12 hours uh, baking out maps, which is wonderful up until, oh, we need to move this wall slightly. Oh, that door is whatever. And then you've broken the lighting in those areas and then you have to do that again. And that's like, when you build video games, it's constant iteration. And I know people say that a lot, but I, I don't think if you really understand the level of Oh, that's not quite perfect over there. Oh, we've got bleed through in this corner. Oh, there's an overlap in these two meshes. Oh, the staircase doesn't quite match the collision geometry. And we need to slightly change the stair height so that when the AI walk up and down it, the feet look right. Like yeah. the tens of millions of little details that is what goes into making a game of this caliber. How the you can see here happening? where like Jack's feet Sandra actually hit the ground the properly. The binding stone uh, you didn't destroy. That's tough. It's, yeah, it's like, one. it's Thanks. stupid to say this, but it's really hard to do that. And doing that is, it's a constant okay. iteration. You have people just in these levels all the time. Oh, I need to add a chest. Oh, we're changing the loot drop. Oh, we're moving where that loot is. Bake the lights again. And so going to this thing where it's like, oh, the lights are there, and you just run the game to make sure everything looks correct. It, it's a game changer as far as building really high-end, high-fidelity levels and games with a much, much smaller team. So hopefully will will be a trend. It also unlocks this for, for indie-level teams. This is something that you can do a a realistic amount of this work with a four person team. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I'm still waiting for a lot of those games as this technology is finally out, but man, real time lighting and the ability to just do this stuff sort of in editor on the fly as you're going, it's just, it's such a game changer. Another big uh, feature for Unreal that was really, really helpful in getting this game done is the one file per actor part of world partition um in in the older versions of unreal you essentially can only have one person working in a map at a time and what that does is it allows uh, lots of people to share the space and so making big spaces like lucium making these levels with all this complicated art you know uh, having the artists and you know multiple artists able to work in the same space at the same time and not worry about oh i can't can't merge right? i can't bring these together like having that not be a problem and having collaborative i think for especially for julia's julia's team i mean i think it must have been such a nightmare beforehand uh, oh it definitely when we were on unreal 4 it was really design and art um that we are just constantly working in the maps and on top of each other and so yeah previously we would have to separate things out into different um what was the um, before? World, was world, world composition. composition. Yeah, and world well, sub levels. Level it makes little tiny yeah, sub levels. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we had to make like a, basically a whole bunch of sub levels where all of the set dressing in Lucium would be, uh, you know, for one area would be in a sub level, and then all the design content, you know, placing all of the triggers and all the loot chests and everything would be in another. But there are just so many times where. Uh, we trust the the level designers, and so they you know, would have to go in and yeah move, move a crate that was getting in the way of an enemy or a, you know, line of sight blocking or bad collision. And so it was just a constant back and forth of having to be like, hey, can you check in this sub level? I need it for five minutes, or I really need to sculpt the landscape. Uh, and even though it's like all one giant big landscape, 
you can imagine how difficult that was when we were kind of stepping on each other's toes. And uh, yeah, the one file per actor system means that every individual asset uh, has a distinct Unreal ID ostensibly. And so instead of checking out an entire sub-level full of props, you're checking out one crate and uh, and checking that in. So it just really made it that much easier for us to just kind of work harmoniously and not be constantly pinging each other on, on Slack to check stuff in. It's so crazy to me that that this was able to be made almost entirely remote. Like there are, there is an office and the office is great because the doggies get to hang out and it's really nice. Like I've gotten to visit and just hang out with everyone in person. But primarily this game was made basically almost fully remote. That's what's happening. <laughs> I mean, we were dealing with the pandemic during the main production, right? Yeah. So when we really got into the, we're going to do the main part of really building the game, we couldn't meet, you know, <laughs> we couldn't get together. It was like everyone was working from home. And um, I th I personally think that it, we did pretty well. It's really a, oh, it was a hard challenge for everyone. I think everyone went through it. Obviously, we all know what it was like. Um, but as a studio, we, we did a good job of keeping that feeling of being together as a team. Um, and I think we did pretty well for learning how to be a remote studio as we were starting. You know, it's and like also just afforded us the ability to hire like that many more people just who mm -hmm. are scattered across time zones. Just the you know when you're not having to just limit yourself to people within the Bay Area, um, yeah. you just suddenly unlock a, a whole pool of applicants who are all tremendously talented. And uh, yeah, we were able to just kind of. It is, it's impressive that we we're able to to do all of that. Yeah, that we absolutely. The... <laughs> Sometimes uh, around lunchtime, my cat just insists on lap time. If I don't give it to her, she sticks her entire booty in my face until I provide <laughs> love and snacks. <laughs> Can you play the video game? This is Janji. She's the real streamer. I'm just the <laughs> backup. I push the buttons. <laughs> okay. Let's see if she will let me play for a minute. <laughs> These portal doors are so beautiful. It's crazy. Oh, the, the path pieces and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, this is the entrance to the path, so we kind of wanted to bring some of that geometry. Um, all out like feel like it's bleeding out into this yeah. room it's so cool going in one more hour you can do it he's like no <laughs> i don't want to do it okay i might have to actually have to give her a snack i'm gonna give her a tiny snack i'll be right back in just a moment i'm so sorry What should we talk about what has is gone? <laughs> Uh, random numbers. With different time zones, were you able to get development going 24 hours a day when needed, just handing off work around the world? Uh, we keep uh, sort of Pacific standard time hours since uh, the majority of our company is in that time zone. And then, you know, obviously, like, one of the benefits of remote work is you can, you know, that's, like, be available during that time for meetings, but you're early able to work around your time when you need to, you know, so we had uh people in portugal and spain who were working on the project who you know mostly worked really early in the morning for the rest of us uh but you know we so um we weren't doing like a 24-hour grind at any at any point i mean so we I, we were well 
there, there's a couple different facets to this. So as everybody knows, EA was our, our publisher and distributor for this game, and they also handled QA. And the QA team was in Romania, uh, right. which so we had uh, the, the, there's everybody's got a little PTSD from this. So our game had eight to nine hour build times. And so what would happen, we would have to check in by like we had two o'clock noon, somewhere in there Pacific time in order to ensure that the builds were done, uploaded into the EA system, downloaded to Romania and spread out on people's machines so they could start testing the beginning of their day, which was midnight our time. They would finish those. I would then have an 8 a.m. our time meeting with them at the end of their work day to understand what was going on. We would then have those bugs to start our work day. Uh, so there, that was part of our loop. We did have people sort of uh, you know, in Taiwan or in uh, China, in Singapore. We had a couple of people just do the world tour thing where, you know, oh, I'm gonna go, you know, jet around the world and, and live in whatever for a month and then move to the next place for a month and work with us. And that actually worked fairly well for a lot of people. So we, we did end up having people working fairly flexible, uh, but you know, the, again, the thing with, with working on a game is you do, yeah, having 24 hours a day of continuous development is actually not ideal because of that whole testing problem. Mm -hmm. you, don't you really need to have a point where you say this is today's build give your qa or qd team time to evaluate it and react so that you can then come back and not keep building on mistakes over and over that's one of the bigger problems you get is oh the uh, whatever the this level starting to look good but all the collisions bad and nobody can play it because they can't get through the door and you just keep building and building and building and it or the enemies don't spawn in anymore because whatever or you someone checked in a change to an animation and they accidentally checked in a change to the the rig and it blew out all the bones and now nothing animates when it spawns in like these are all things we actually did this this happens um i think we just recently i saw we broke the brute for in one of our our uh testing things just because you know it Someone checked in something and that, that one thing worked, but it caused something else to not work. So it's tough. I know I say this a lot, but like making games is really hard. It's there's so many little things that you can do wrong. A uh, super and I were dealing with an issue yesterday where we were dealing with tuning things and <laughs> silly enough that one of our tuning files was had the wrong name that it was based off of the JSON that we were using to build the tuning file. Yep. Uh, somehow that didn't get caught for a while. No one had changed it. And it was just, it just didn't process and was spitting out errors. And we finally got it fixed. But it was a booby trap. It was like a booby yeah. trap from nine months ago. Oh, no. Like a year ago. Yeah. It literally was from a year ago from a thing that we weren't, we didn't even end up using. It was like a, it was a cut. It was a cut booby trap, even. Which, and, it, yeah. Again, it happens. It's normal. Uh, yeah. There's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's random. There's, there's, it's big, intricate systems. Uh, the, probably with the greater problem of when you have 100, 150 people working on a game or, heaven forbid, your DTA and you have 1,000 people working on a game, you may have a system that three people know that have ever touched it. And... You know, they may not be awake when that bug shows up, or they may be on a different high priority thing when something shows up, or you don't even know that bug has anything to do with them because you don't even know the system exists, uh, which is where my sleepless nights all come from. It's just that kind of stuff over and over. Yeah. Carlos, so there are updates still coming to PS5 that should improve performance even further than all the updates we've already put out. But also every engine has its faults and every version of every engine has its faults and switching versions is also often a very complicated lengthy process because there's i mean games these days are just so 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 complicated there's so many moving parts and if you change one thing it changes everything and that's true of every engine so saying that you know maybe it would have been better if you had built in a 
older version of the engine, you don't know what all of the benefits are. Like, the, I don't know if that would even have been possible to create the game that we really wanted to create in a different engine or an older engine or something like that. So unfortunately, it's just the nature of technology. It's always moving forward. But the reason it's always moving forward is because the new stuff is always offering something really valuable, right? To the developers, to players, to the end uh, experience. And there's always going to be pluses and minuses. There's always going to be things that are hard that you need to optimize and work through. But the end result is the best that it can be because people try new things and just try to make the technology do everything that we can dream of, right? It'll be really cool when technology gets so far that we can just think of what we want and it'll just exist. That'll be a really interesting day. <laughs> but even then, I bet we'll run into some interesting bugs. People are I, I still going to push it to the limit. I'm glad we switched to Unreal 5. Uh, the there were a couple of Unreal 4 games that came out in 2023 in that had serious problems that were engine, really engine-related. Like the, the was it Night fall redfall redfall was like that game had so many issues on launch and so much of that was because it was built in unreal 4 so, and so the, did outriders. The streaming like a... outriders also yeah the yeah. streaming performance uh on consoles for world composition was really poor um and i don't think we could have made the maps that we made uh in Unreal 4. There's oh, no way we, we could have done Lucy. Or, you know, no. Yeah, no way. They didn't have um, large world, world coordinates. Like, we literally... I, I, They've you know, not, not to get into all the things people don't care about, but Julia's team made massive maps. I think They're multiple kilometers big. There's so many of them have fully playable spaces that we ended up sectioning off so that you couldn't wander over there and get lost because you could be lost for days. They're so big. Uh, you know, when you see things in the distance and you see trees and little mountains and stuff, those are trees and mountains in the distance on a map that you could walk across. That's not a skybox. Those are not cards. Um, you know, I, for those of you who play other games, they typically are. I've gotten in some games where I've managed to get past a level boundary and walk out. There's a bunch of 2D tree cards hanging out, and then you walk behind them, and you either don't see them or you see a bare outline or whatever. That that's not the game we made. This is all everything. Every single like you're looking at the stream right now. Every single path piece out here is a real path. That is a real model that you can, if you know what you're doing, get to, land on, walk around on, hop to the next one. Uh, there's a video of somebody in Saren. <laughs> Who managed to get off path in the early part of the game and just started wandering Damn through it! all of the buildings in Saren? Oh no! Which, which you can do. <laughs> we worked so hard to stop that. Yeah, which, which we, we eventually patched away from because once you, you know, we're, we're making a game that has triggers and streaming things, and it's really hard to have the plot work when you're not actually playing along with us. Uh, we're obviously not a fully open world game. What did you do? But. I mean, you're not wrong in that we, we're we an early adopter on 5. Uh, we're a 5-1-1 game. I think we're the only 5-1-1 game in history. And Unreal was pretty rough in 5-0. It was still rough in 5-1, which is why we actually had to move to 5-1-1 in order to ship. Uh, and part of that, that CTO title that I have it includes the fact that I run a lot of our engine services. So I'm the guy who is sitting around with a special hidden version of the game on 5.2, on 5.3, and currently on 5.4, where I'm evaluating the, the trade-off of bugs and technology and whether or not our plugins work right and does wise work can we even generate and play audio in this one and has amd and nvidia gotten their upscalers working Just hold on. does insert whatever other plugin we have piece of technology work right uh but i can tell you with the changes to lumen and nanite that has happened since 5.1 like that's if you happen to get my super secret version on 5.3, the game runs solid 60. You just forget how much it reads. You know, yes, we probably should have dialed back some of our fidelity in order to make the game run a little bit faster. 
Uh, that's always a trade-off, I think. The balance on that is the artistic vision of this high fidelity game and where we're at. Like this, th this type of a scene and the way this is all working, this is live. This isn't a baked movie that that you know someone did for God of War Horizons or any of those games that you're like, oh, that's so wonderful. Well, yeah, because it's done in post. And it's all done in post. That's all rendered out. This is all rendered live. Roshanians have occupied the city. And, and part of that is trying to keep uh, things good, but also part of that is allowing us to do things like, hey, if we swap the sigil, that shows up in the right sigil in the movie. And there's a lot of things you do, as, as you know from a lot of other games, where you can see the lower fidelity cinematics, where they're showing your actual gear off because rendering those in real time is really expensive, and so they're, they have to cheapen it out. Ours aren't. Like, ours... It's the real character running at real frame rate. And yeah, maybe it's not as good as we would like. Um, but, you know, if you give me another month or two, maybe there'll be a surprise coming. Everybody's summer Christmas stocking. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, um, technology is so tricky and games are so much more complex than anyone gives them credit for. Like, and like I said, you change one thing and it changes things you don't expect. It's just always the case that every piece of tech, every engine, every new thing will have its faults. And sometimes those faults are... I don't care. Uh, sometimes the positives just really outweigh the negatives and you also can't predict like a lot of a lot of people get upset about launches that happen that are um tricky right people systems don't interact with the game the way we expect as developers sometimes and that's honestly that happens to so many games that launch these days for a lot of different reasons, but at least one of those reasons is because there are so many different configurations out there. Even something as simple as like people's headsets and how they're set up with their PlayStation 5s can change a person's experience. And that's external hardware, right? Think about all of the different kinds of CPUs and GPUs and sets of RAM and how people have their RAM set up, right? Whether or not they've turned on all of the bells and whistles and things in their BIOS that they don't even know exist, or they haven't, or maybe they've overclocked, or maybe they haven't. You know, maybe someone's uh, Xbox is, maybe they live somewhere really warm like Florida and their Xbox is actually sitting by a window. And so it just isn't running the way it's supposed to. There's literally so many variables with all of it that are so hard to predict. Um, but all developers, not just ours, do their best. They really, really do their best. Everybody wants launches to be perfect. Everybody wants every single one of your experiences in our game to be perfect. And that's just not human <laughs> reality, but we try. And all we really want is for you guys to have a good time. That's like literally the entire point of making games is for everyone playing them to have the most possible fun, the best possible experience. You got to keep that in mind. As torture goes on on screen. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Have you seen? Yeah. <laughs> I really liked this whole section coming back to Saren. Like, even though it's sad, it's cool to have the freedom to run around it a little bit more and see all the detail. Because Saren is just one of the most intricate cool locations like if you think about it this whole this all of these structures that's the actual bridge above us right yeah. so uh there's a piece of lore there's a, a con piece of concept art i'm sorry that i posted like a really really long time ago in the discord that i should repost at some point on our socials but it's pretty much a big picture of this bridge spanning the wound so the wound is the hole in the world of avium that's been created partially by the ever war um, largely, it's been caused by the imbalances caused by the war and the, you know, fight for control of magic and how people have not been working with the Aelori the way they're supposed to. Um, all kinds of different problems have caused the wound. And this bridge, Saren Bridge, this is just one small part of it. And all of these structures, the scaffolding and people's homes that they've grown up in and lived in all this time, it's all attached to the bridge itself. Above the bridge, there's more. There's a whole city up there. Um, and they're very there's proud. There's the barnacle houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, Cause they're like clinging to, to these big pillars. It's so cool. I um, I love how that, that platform where the execution is happening on is where the, um, the, the, the um, market explodes yeah. on the way through in the first place. Like that area you're running through, you jumped and hopped over it when you were here last time. And it's like that thing blew up and now they built an execution platform where there was like a market. And that just tells you so much about the world yeah. right there. If you remember, that's where you were. Yeah. You know, um, bad guys, very, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> This is why we must stop them. Actionable. Yep. The world would have benefited from the war we were waging. You sound like Kirkin. Don't ever compare me to her. Look, I can't justify what Sandrak's doing now. He's lost his fucking mind. Now you realize he's crazy. Him that your grand Magnus could never even pretend to have. I know you saw a different side to her. You keep dancing around something you obviously want to tell me about Kirkin. So just do it. Out in the open? Sure, why not? Rashan hasn't produced a Magnus in 10 years, Jack. Magic doesn't take to our people anymore. What does that have to do with Kirkin? She's the one that sent the immortals that did it. They infiltrated their way to the Hanging Isles, poisoned the ley lines across the skies of Rashan. All of our children have been born lightless ever since. Wait, what? I is it permanent? We don't know. No one's been able to lift the curse, not even Sandrak with the Binding Stone. Without new magic coming in, Rashan's culture and traditions are dying. You understand the horror of it, right? Kirkin's ruthless, but she wouldn't poison the ley lines like that. You don't believe me? I believe Sandrak blames her for it, because of course he would. The connection our magical bloodlines have with the ley lines is gone, wiped out, sterilized. So this is so wild Sean because the ley lines seem so who are the ever present and it's such an essential time, part. They're literally the, the blood vessels so of this world. To end it. And to I'll cut say, them off like this seems insane. Really to this point. <laughs> are we done here? I don't know. Um, we? I love some of the really things you learn through conversations. Um, like learning, talking to Belming that what the reason that the, the Magni are Seriously? able to keep their stronghold, of, the they're the ones who have the magic, essentially comes down to real estate investment. Just uh, that they own all the homes that are under the ley lines. Sandra so they was, go and have their bait. You know, they have these special you places you go when you're pregnant to go live under a ley line while you're pregnant so that you That's not what absorb all that for. magic. So you're oh, more likely to have a magic baby. And that it's like the property. The king and Kalthus, there was a moment you know, there where you uh, hesitated. How they control the power can change how uh, this works, Jack. is really interesting. Like little detail that all of it. Right. you know, we uh, had a chance at you, you get out of those, and convers those conversations that you go yeah. with you and, saw that. Of uh, course I was going to save you. It really is crazy. Like the, the way that society has twisted itself to try to basically have as much power, as much magic as they can. Lots of parallels to, you know, modern society too. <laughs> um, yeah. What made you decide to bring We don't have to scene? follow through with the heavy. whole conversation, but it's interesting. So for anybody watching the stream later, you guys anyway, can we grew up here. play the game helps, of course, but you can also read the cool subtitles if you're curious. Figured we could use that to our advantage. The more um, are there any scenes in the game that made you go, yeah, I'm going to pause this and make it my desktop background, make a print, etc. So many random numbers. Um, I, I don't, it doesn't show up on my Steam because I have multiple accounts and multiple different versions of the game installed. Um, or I have had like lots of different versions of the game installed. But I have something like, I definitely have over a thousand hours in this game. And part of that is because I just would leave it running. <laughs> Like, I'd leave it running on my game PC and put up a display of what my game PC was showing on my top monitor while I was working on my main monitor and just, like, have it sitting somewhere pretty in the sounds of nature or the sounds of wherever I am. Sometimes it was a shrouded realm, I won't lie, because it's so cool. But, yeah, I I basically just made myself backdrops by leaving the game running. I totally had an area like that. Um, 
test that was in Lucium, kind of okay. over by that first, I guess you leave Lordsville, there's kind of like that whole puzzle um, with the, like scaffolding and stuff that's kind of off to the right. And in front of it was just a little stream that just had like water, wildflowers and like water lilies and just the sun always kind of hit it perfectly and you know, there are trees all around it. And so when I was working on that area, I definitely kept, kept it just kind of up because it was so beautiful. Um, it, it also, if you go onto our Hi, Discord, um, there are some users who have used some, like, uh, there's a user named Shinobi on our Discord who has taken some just incredible screenshots, uh, that make really good posters. Um, I think they, people have used, like, a reshade path tracing plugin, I think, to get even better fidelity out of the stuff but like if you go on there's a screenshots and art channel on our discord that has just some absolutely stunning shots of the game really really beautiful so um if you're looking for like nice backgrounds or screenshots for your phone or something like there's some <coughs> really beautiful pictures of our game that like I don't know what they did to make it so pretty on top like they must have just really had it crank the setting well, they somehow, they somehow um, took control of the camera, I think. Yeah, yeah. And they also were messing around with the FOV. And depth of field and stuff. Wow. Yeah. How did they do that? <laughs> I, I don't know, but I'm so glad they did because their stuff is so pretty. It is really cool, yeah. Yeah. Really, really. I mean, the, the world is so beautiful. There's so many, like, very beautiful environments in it. I could probably fill up my entire four terabyte hard drive of just images of this, this world it's so cool well, you can it's see like, a lot was... of those in the, um, the art station art blast mm -hmm. that we did like there's oh, yeah. so many images from the like the environments <clears throat> and concepts characters um, it's it's really cool to see the transition from these concepts into actual physical 3d spaces and so there's some really cool screenshots that um, some of the art team took. Yeah, I'm putting links to that in. And chat. it's almost like um, with the uh, when Dan was talking about the Shinobi person, it's almost like someone took a photographer and just kind of dropped them into our game somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Like th there was because the the setups for the shots were I wouldn't call them cinema, like cinematic. They're they're more like um, what a photographer would do out in yeah. nature or something. Really cool. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Some of the environment artist screenshots as well, like same deal. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, we're also, we were working on, I don't know if we'll be able to publish it. We'll probably post it in the Discord when we're ready, but we were working on some wallpapers for you guys because people had asked on socials. So just some like character wallpapers and some landscape wallpapers and stuff like that. But I definitely recommend checking that link that I just posted in all the chats for the art station post because there's so much gorgeousness gorgeousness in there. Okay. The sky in the Shatterfanes with the lightning. Uh, just so cool. Like that those are just the, that orange color and the like the lightning the orange lightning blast coming down and hitting stuff just so cool yeah. one of those scenes that i really like don't laugh <laughs> what are you we also have jason joining us down there he's Hello. our lead combat designer connection to the he was here last week but you guys didn't we'll get, get to see him so this the this meantime, week you guys get to see him <laughs> a little pick at the office back behind me yeah let's split up so cool. Oh, you can see the the really amazing. Like we have um some pretty amazing uh whiteboard drawings on the walls that are just like they've been there for a long time because they're so good. You just don't want to erase them. Yeah. Um, there's one in the conference room that is just we got it done for launch, I think, and it's like the Palathon. It's super cool. Hey, Shizno. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, the lore book is really neat. I wish I wish we could just like have more people have access to it because it's really 
interesting tidbits of lore. Um, I've been posting videos on our TikTok, all of our socials, really, um, just including some of that lore and some of the lore that's a little bit harder to find in the game. I basically just run around our confluence trying to find tidbits of cool stuff and sharing it with you guys. I definitely recommend well, checking out the Discord um, or the TikTok channel for that. Um, so. I should repost the link in the Reddit also for the digital art book yeah because i think our digital art and lore book uh is i mean it's just really awesome and i think it's this the post is pretty old now so it's hard to just scroll down a long way yeah. bye <laughs> <clears throat> I like how we're literally shooting each other at the same time. <laughs> more health packs i'm definitely not playing quite as well today just because i haven't played in a couple of days so my muscle memory of the controls not quite as perfect as it was but we beat one of the seven so it just took me a few tries <laughs> okay the more bane is the fight that i'm a little bit nervous about that one it's such a good fight. He's such a cool boss. <coughs> it's a little tricky. Uh, I think Jason uh, can talk more about Morbane than anybody since Morbane's very much his baby. Yeah? Oh, you're muted. You're muted, Jason. Oh, no. Morbane is Jason's baby. The biggest baby ever. Oh, my goodness. Okay, as soon as we get his audio fixed, I... So it, it might be, hopefully, it's the thing you set your mic to at the bottom of the ping window. Jason. How about now? Oh, Is there we better? go. Perfect. Excellent. Great. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Morbin is, is uh, one of my favorite fights. It's, um, we, our, our high level goal was to make the Dark Souls fight. We wanted it to be as tight as possible yeah. and just be on you the whole time with melee and ranged. You had to switch up your strategy. But also be possible with all three possible specs that you could come in with it. So we um we had a couple uh couple engineers and a couple designers work on that guy over like about a year to make that as tight as possible, and it came out pretty well. <laughs> I love that fight. I love Souls likes, but I also really really love FPS gameplay, and having that kind of experience in an FPS game is so satisfying. I think um, Super touched on this last time we were talking, but it was a really fun challenge to put a lot of first-person melee enemies into a game that's primarily about shooting. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good games that do this as their primary focus, like Left 4 Dead, but we have a hybrid ranged enemy versus melee enemy, and so that was a really tricky challenge to get the legibility of enemy attacks uh, working, and I, I think it came out pretty well. Also, have you been keeping up with your upgrades on Godspear? You at rank uh, eight yet? Yes. So I maxed yeah. it out. I maxed it out earlier today. But do I have ascensions? That is the question. <laughs> I definitely was Just like neglecting. Three ascensions. Yeah. Get those upgrades. I was neglecting leveling things before for sure. Let's go with that. I'll probably need that. I saw Aaron. I liked it, I think, in the Discord or something. Um, but yes, I love seeing people's kitties. <coughs> okay. Um, hopefully I didn't miss anything. Lost 
grab all loot. I'm going the wrong way. It's just so cool. Like, look at this. There's a bridge and a whole city above us. Saren also has, like, a, a noble class, kind of. Uh, the citizens that own all of the real estate up there. And <coughs> there's definitely some tensions between the people that live below the Saren Bridge and people that live on top of the Saren Bridge. But ultimately, they're all one people. Dilutions. <laughs> well, the people of Saren will actually tell you they're not Lucians. Some of them. <laughs> oh, this they are they're from Saren. A it's so crazy. Right. Ismo, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Machismo, yes. Yeah, look at this. I'm not Devin, I can't be that that uh suave with that sentence. <laughs> I still remember when um, Michael Kirkbride was coming up with all the ways that people, you know, you know, you've got people from Saren and they're Sarenites, or um, people from Lucium are Lucians, people from Rasharn are Rasharnians. There was a couple of them where we're like, no, we can't, we're not going to use that. We'll use something different. So Michael had fun coming up with that stuff, like the. Cal the people from Calthus are not called Calthusians like we originally talked about. They're just called the Calth. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Or Calais, which we didn't really do much of in the game. <clears throat> um, the people from Calais, I think, are called Calaisish, which is kind of cool. Really? Because at at first we were calling them Calaisians. That's just too long. <laughs> and then. And then, and then Michael comes on and goes, no, Kalelish. He's just got such a natural ability to um, evoke coolness, in my opinion, with his writing. Yes. I just think, uh, I just really want to see what Rashawn looks like. Yeah. Like, I think it's one of those oh, things we where have, just like... Oh, we have concepts. I know. I, I just really want to <sighs> see, like, Rashawn, because it's like, Lucian is so beautiful and you know like the you get out of the deep mirror and you get into ormond and it's like that there's so much design in all of the everything everything you see and like the the ships and the enemies that the yeah. shard has and you just think like oh man what does their architecture look like like it's just so curious you know like uh some of those things are i'm, I'm kind of glad we held it out and didn't and, and left it out there like for imagination, but man, I really want to. I really want to go to Rasharn and like see what Rasharn is like. Cause... I can't wait until I see all those Salamine rocks everywhere. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. Well, actually, so Julia and myself were working with Morton and Chris Benora when he was still with us um, on a bunch of mood boards for uh, Calais and Rasharn and Lavendry. Um, but when we were working on the on the Rasharn stuff, definitely there were Salamine pools around around the um, around like the the structures, the architecture, and stuff like that. And it was out in the middle of the desert and had some really really cool oh, vis uh, like visuals. And uh, we don't want to spoil it because maybe one day, hopefully, you'll get to see it. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, that would be awesome. That would be amazing. There's so much more cool stuff. I feel like you guys just have infinite creativity in your brains because there's already so much cool stuff in this game, but there's so much more that you've all talked about wanting to create. <coughs> awesome. Oh, yeah. Just need people to buy the game. Buy yeah, it. Exactly. Buy it, people. I just want to put it out there also, the, uh, the scene of... Luna and Jack talking when she talks about Salomon and that next time you see they see each other they're gonna have to kill each other. Uh, I think it's probably one of my favorite character moments in the game. The funniest thing about that is being an art director, I got a little bit embarrassed because when I read that and Michael talked about it, this color Salomon, I was like, uh, I said, I've never heard of that color before. Is that a real color Do I, that I don't know about? Of course, he made it up. <laughs> so it's not, I, I can feel a little bit better about myself. Comment in, in stream if you uh, if you know what Salomon looks like. Yeah. A really good point. I totally would not have known that that was not a real thing. 
<laughs> I know. I was embarrassed. I was like, oh, oh, oh it's all online. I had to look. I looked it up on the internet. You can't find anything. <laughs> okay, I don't remember how to do this at all. <laughs> uh, gotta get up above it. Probably. Do I need to be on this thing? I remember I how I got, to do the puzzles. <laughs> I think I got pointed out um, for being old in Twitch here. Oh no! Because uh -oh. I'm the only one who wrote a paragraph. Everyone writes these choppy little short things. <laughs> 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 Sorry guys, can't help it. That is 100% okay. I have done that plenty of times. I just, I just love talking about the game. And, and oh how it how it came to be because you guys don't get to really see that stuff you get to experience the game and how it is but how it came to be is sometimes just as interesting yeah i think <clears throat> you were able to imagine the color due to seeing what different pearl paint colors look like that's interesting it's almost better just to leave it in your imagination yeah yeah because if we were just to pick a color for it and um you know, there's too much closure there and it's not exciting anymore. Yeah. I will say though, working on the concepts, we were doing our best to represent the color Salamine as something that is still left up to your, your brain to decide. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it any more than that. <clears throat> it's not just one flat color, I guess is a good way of putting it. I am, um, you know, there's, there is sort of a power to not actually <clears throat> filling in some of that too. Like there's a, we do that a few times. Uh, there the conversation you have with, um, with, uh, Orfe when you first meet her and the three atrocities of Rasharn, and then we just never explain what those are. And it's just like, I, I gotta tell you, like, I, I know what the poisoning of the Wraith Wind is because I've, asked <laughs> the, the poisoning of the ley line and the wraith wind yeah. yeah yeah um you know uh the one of the ones that it's funny because the the friendly construct in the pale forest um i used to think like we should have given it a name like we should have oh, yeah. given it a name and we should have not just called it construct but then what i realized after the game came out was by not giving it a name we're giving the players the opportunity to give it a name themselves and so we end up with names like dorito and, uh, <laughs> um dwayne, the rock construct with dwayne the rock construct and if we had given it a name then the players wouldn't give it a name themselves right and so like there's sort of a by giving it the generic i'm just going to call you construct we're sort of setting the player up to be like no i want to call you dwayne you know and if we had called it dwayne then we were just throwing in an easter egg right there's also a little bit of lore which you can get if you read the lore book about constructs and the kind of geneva conventions around making sure the constructs were not built human in human form which is why archons are kind of so unique because they they are humanoid uh and there's it, if you find a little bit of lore in the game, you, you might hear a little bit about Rosharnians actually taking uh, constructs, Archons specifically, into their society and giving them land and giving them home and what kind of tea Archons drink. Um, I really enjoy that bit. <laughs> I love when giant things are called tiny. Uh, my friend, my very good friend, had a cat that was called tiny and it was literally the biggest cat I have ever seen like her her butt was the size of my head it was hilarious <laughs> <clears throat> touching on that archon thing again um and what jason was talking about it's kind of a almost a parallel to what's going on with ui right now or sorry ai um that it's it's ever so slowly becoming more and more human with you know the chat windows and everything else uh, and at some point, we're going to be faced with the decision of, is this the right thing to do? In AVM's case, with um, the not the Archon specifically, but Constructs, they very much got to a place where um, 
things were not going well because they were they were basically tools, robots, if you will, uh, to do tasks. And they they may have become a little too sentient and maybe um, not agreeable. Um, <laughs> so when they were making constructs in the future, they decided to push away from the human form and well, treat them as constructs. They not saying it's the right thing to do yeah. or the wrong thing to do. It's a dilemma. I feel like the chroniclers pretty much prove that no matter what shape you put them into, you have to treat them really well, or else things might go in a direction you don't like. Well, as well, we if you're all know, gonna... the way that magic works is it, it takes the form of wherever you give it. So if you start to make it human, it's going to start acting human. Yeah, that's true. And if you um, if you assign a construct to do a particular task, like writing down the, the 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 chronicles of people they're gonna be like the uh, well hopefully good news is honest news and truthful factual news and you may not like what you read and also if you ask a bunch of robots to write down the most important things happening in the world and they start to chronicle the decay of of mountains and the evaporation of oceans you might be a little offended which is Maybe something that happened to those guys in the library. You're rocking the Morvan. What's going on here? <laughs> I have learned how to properly use Dash. I just remapped it to something that I could actually hit. <laughs> uh. And nailing those headshots. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Not good. Not good. Hey, Bash is one of those abilities that ah. is, uh, it's got some real depth to it. You used Bash defensively against the Morbane's barrage attack? Well done. <laughs> Clever. Kind of was like, uh, maybe I'll survive if I do this. <laughs> I didn't know it would work. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I think I made him mad. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> 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 I defensively punch you in the face. Yes. <laughs> Sir Chog, thank you for the 114 months. That's bonkers. Thank you, thank you. You started the game on PS Plus and you're really enjoying it. Thank you, Skenderija. Did I horribly mispronounce your name? I'm so sorry if I did. <laughs> but thank you so much for letting us know you enjoy the game. That seriously means the absolute world to all of us. It really does. You guys enjoying the game is the whole point. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know that. Thank you for checking it out. Um, just as a reminder to anybody watching this now or later, the game is forever going to be available as a free trial on PlayStation and Xbox and also a free demo on Steam. So if you're not sure and you just kind of want to check it out, you want to make sure it runs well on your system, just go ahead and download the trial or the demo and try it at the end of the free trial, uh, free trials and the free demo on Steam, there is a 5% bonus discount that you can get to purchase the game if you like it and you want to do that <clears throat> um, currently we're also on PlayStation Plus so you can yeah, you go that way but I want to go this way <laughs> um, you can get the game as part of your PlayStation Plus membership this whole month so if you have PlayStation Plus it doesn't matter what level you've got it at just go ahead and claim the game. So you can play it to your heart's content. Okay. Onwards. That was such a good fight. I'm always like at least 5% more nervous when 
there are devs in this stream and I'm trying to do combat that's difficult. I mean, it's hard to play when people are talking to. Like, I want to pay attention to this. Jack. And then you get hit <laughs> with a fireball. Yeah. That's new and awful. It's causing the wound to spread faster now. Sandrax summoned so much magic up from the shrouded realm that it's boiling over. It's too concentrated to hold. Especially if you're also keeping everyone else's magic in check. I know he doesn't see this as his fault. He's probably just offended by it. As if the Pentasod was denying him some final lordship. <coughs> I can buy us some time. I like how solutions oriented Jack is. Like he has his faults. Gave everybody their magic. But he's he always trying not. to figure out a way to fix I stuff and make stuff better. What's the difference? A uh, scale. Not everybody's well, like that. Going, <laughs> and I even don't know even going back to when he met that construct. Yeah. Find a you know, he wanted to know its lady. name and it, it didn't know it couldn't Dara answer. So he's like, he really wants to give him a name. What? He re no, really wants to treat him like a buddy. Yeah. I'll explain how you're on our side and now. he's a construct from Rashard, like from the other side. So yeah. I think genuinely like Jack is a good hearted person. But I'm not. Not really. I'm done, Jack. I've turned against my own people. I can't go back to Rashan. Lucium is no longer my home. I'm just done fighting for either of them. Come on. I think uh, one of the things I like about Jack is that, I told that I'd he's, go <coughs> he, you know, well, I think that's his virtue is that he's trying to do the right thing. Even if he doesn't always do the right thing, like, he always wants to. He's always trying to. He makes the wrong choices sometimes. He makes the big wrong choices. But, you know, he's not, uh, he's not a chosen one. He's not like... We don't I have all you. this power, and I'm gonna be the one who has this it. ego. It's gonna make me, you know, uh, be the one to save the world. Like he has a lot of doubts about himself. He spends a lot of time going, "Am I making the right choice? Am I doing the right thing?" You know. And, I need to get to Glade uh, Gate and find Zendara. He's very human. <laughs> I think we all do that. We all. I don't know of a single person, a single human being, that doesn't want to do want to make the right choices for themselves, for other people. Everybody's always trying to do their best, right? Yeah. Well, and he's being manipulated too, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, like, it becomes very clear that like, they don't tell it, they, they keep it in secrets from him. He should have known about, if he'd known about it, he might've made different choices. You know, like the, the, you know, um, he's definitely like, you can see, uh, Kirkin is working him from the first sentence that comes out of her mouth. You know, when she, when he's standing on that platform and he's looking at the uh, looking at the snow globe and he's just like, I just lost everyone in my life. And like the first words out of her mouth are manipulation. <clears throat> you know, and yeah, it's uh, he's in a hard position and it's a hard world. It's a hard world too, right? He's, he goes through a lot. <laughs> I still want to beat up Kirkin. I want to beat up Sandrak. <laughs> Every time Sandrak opens his mouth, I just want to put my fist in it. Yeah. Just, uh, He's so arrogant. It's so hard not <laughs> to want to kill him. Oh, whoops. Yeah, but one, one thing I like about Sandrak in that case is he and Jack share a lot of intention. And so he's you can you can respect his perspective on this stuff. He's just kind of a dick about it all. <laughs> yeah, you do get to beat him out. That's true. Um, you know... Uh, I appreciate that he's not a a enemy where you go. Well, maybe he was right. You know, <laughs> he's not Killmonger, right? You're not going. Well, maybe he was right about this. Like, no, he was always wrong. Like, <laughs> I think we ended in a place in this one where you're pretty you're pretty certain he was wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, not quite as bad as Killmonger, but certainly. Not, not correct. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> you got a double jump. Hover, oh, hover. There, there, yeah. there we go. <laughs> we made it. And I make it to I think it was funny because the solution is pretty obvious. You just don't think that could really be the solution. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, it can't really be I have to jump. Some of the best uh, super secret areas, especially in Caldera, you need to do a double jump hover beat, uh, 
disrupt puzzle, and I, I love it. <laughs> the the puzzle designer in the in our game, um, for our game, really nailed it. I think. Yeah, yeah. They're so satisfying when you figure them out. It is tricky initially because I think not enough people quite realize that they need things they don't have. So like, there's puzzles early in the game and like blue barriers and things that you can't get past without getting some new abilities. And so you might kind of think you're stuck or think the puzzle's really hard, but really you just need an ability that you get later in game. It's very Metroidvania-esque in that way, which is really cool. A lot of people love that. I had a funny experience watching streamers this weekend. Uh, there was a streamer I was watching who, from the very beginning of the game, they had figured out, oh, I just can't interact with this yet. I'm just gonna keep moving. I'm just gonna can't interact with this. Yeah, just gonna keep moving. They kept saying it, and I was like, "This is great." They just and they get to the big puzzle in Gravel Plaza, where Jack says, "I don't think I have the spell for this yet." Every time you interact with it, <laughs> and like they had walked past all the other stuff, and then they get to that one spot, and Jack keeps saying, "I don't think I have a spell for this yet," and they just kept going, and it was like. <laughs> And it, I, I finally was like, "Hey, uh, you can't, you can't do this yet," and they just started racking up. Because oh, they were no. like, every single time, I've just walked away, and then now, like the one time where Jack literally has a voice line over and over and over again saying, "I can't do this," like I got stuck here. <laughs> they just started just dying. It was great. Yeah. It's really easy when you're streaming to miss things because you're looking up a chat or, I mean, depending on where you have chat, but it's just really easy. It's, what happens to me all the time is I'll be looking at chat, but I'll still be moving forward or backwards, especially backwards. But it just ends with me falling off of ledges all the time because I'll just be running and I'll be like, oh, blah, 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 chat, blah, 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 chat, run off the edge of the world. And chat's like, no, Tess. <laughs> happens all the time. Gravity boss is the most OP boss in most games for me. <laughs> you wanted to beat up Kirkin from the start, minion? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of fair. I love her. I do. I love the actress so much. Um, but watching her in this, it's really funny because when I first joined Ascendant uh, almost two years ago now, which is crazy. It, it wasn't two years. It was like 20 months or something. But right around then, my partner and I started rewatching a TV show called Angel. And in that show, she is a goddess and she kind of mentors a young warrior. Um, and she's just like this. She's very, she's more blatantly manipulative than Kir Kirkin is, but you can see the, the inklings of similarities there. And I just, I know, I knew immediately that whoever chose her for this role, whoever was like, oh, she'd be perfect for this, must have seen her in that. <laughs> Do you think Sandrak or, or Kirkin's more dangerous? Mm, good question. But Sandrak's a triarch. Kirkin's a diarch. Yeah. I um I would think that honestly I would be way more afraid to fight Kirkin <clears throat> just because Sandrak's overconfident. Like Sandrak's overconfident. Sandrak thinks he's you know whereas Kirkin is just <clears throat> thinking about how to beat you. Like, <laughs> she's just thinking about how to beat you. She's not thinking about like you know, she she's not gonna be overconfident in the fight. She's not gonna make weak, dumb moves. Like she's a tactician. She's gonna make sure you're weak before you get to fight her. Yeah. And I don't think that you you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, she does definitely think she always knows best. That's true. But I just think that she's probably more cunning, whereas Sandrak is more like, oh, I can just brute force my way through this problem. Uh, and uh, I think that that's, that's it, more more terrifying, terrifying overall. I think there's also something to be said, though, that Sandrak has limits, and and Kirkin really doesn't. It, it's not as expressed as obviously as that, but she really, like, if it took burning the world down to keep her in power, she would do it. 
Yeah, I mean, I definitely think about Kirkin after the end of the story as being the person who just, there's no way she could accept any sort of peace. Like, if there was a peace that came out of the end of the story between Risharn, then she would be a terrorist because there's no way she would ever accept a peace between the two nations because she's been at war her whole life and she doesn't know any peace. Like, like, I think that for me, like, that is my thought of, like, who she would be the most in the next She She would definitely be a rebel because she couldn't accept a peace between Risharn and, and Lucian. I like that the writing can uh, affect people so much. I mean, that's the whole point of it all. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes your sometimes your leaders are not the best people. <laughs> yeah. Kirkin is so calculated. I yeah. I don't know. I don't know which one I'm I'm more nervous about. I mean, Sandra <clears throat> basically brings the world to the absolute brink, and he lets people like Morbane exist and cause utter devastation to completely helpless, lightless people that literally are just trying to eke out whatever's left of a, an existence that they can have um, under this bridge over the wound. Like, things are pretty bad. And here comes this big bully, basically, just <laughs> breaking him down yeah. even more. And Sandrak was the one that not only permitted, but encouraged that. Um, so, I like yeah. um, I like how Gotta get down there and find when the Sandrak both Sandrak and Kirkin are kind of crossed in a way. Um, like when Jack and Kirkin kind of don't see eye to eye, or even Zendara. And then when Sandrak and a certain other person doesn't see eye to eye, the reactions are very different. Kirkin gets angry right away, like she demands loyalty and obedience. Whereas Sandrak just goes, ah, oh, fuck with you then. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't care about, I don't need you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't I don't take uh, take advice from someone whose loyalties are so obviously divided, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't need it. He's very much above everything. That is very I think, true. I think Minion's uh, comment about her guilt over what she did and her push to win. I think it's pretty good. Pretty good comment too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sail ships are so cool. Whoa. <laughs> I remember when we got the tail <laughs> flapping came in and I didn't there's like so many things that like like one day they were there in the development and you didn't expect them. So you're like you're like you're just like I'm you know, I played this game so many times, and all yeah. of a sudden the tail is flapping, and you didn't know the tail was flapping was coming. And you're just like running through doing a test, and it's like I just remember the, I'm running through Saren, and the bombing is starting, and the tail all of a sudden is flapping on the on the sail ship, and it's just like, oh my god, I didn't know it was gonna do that. Like not even like that it you know was done, but like I didn't know it was going to happen. And I just remember the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's so it wasn't going to at one point. Because it, it was like <laughs> millions of triangles, oh, and right, of yeah. course we made it nanite, and then we we're like, no, oh, it has to it has to move. So we had to break all the moving parts into individual pieces and piece it together in a blueprint, which Mark does not like. <laughs> but um, yeah, Mark is right. <laughs> but hey, I want to ask. We made you Dan feel really good. It was worth it. I want to ask you to explain blueprints a little bit, but I also just want to show off this incredible fight scene. This fight is just one of the, it's one of the coolest locations I've ever seen. There's sail ships, giant flying organic looking battleships, just shooting rocket, magic rockets at you. <laughs> like this is incredible. And Thaddeus showing up and just, you know, nailing someone behind him without even looking. That was pretty, pretty badass. <laughs> Uh, this fight's so hard, too. Oh. This is very tricky. I love these guys, but they're mean. Like, we, we really, we made them mean. I mean, they... Uh, 
I've seen a lot of players get stuck on this fight. Yeah, I did for sure the first couple times. Fight again today, who knows? Ah. Let me out! <laughs> oh no! Yeah, you definitely want to get out of the the gravity well. Yeah. <laughs> Oh He'll pin cushion you. Oh you no! Oh my god, I had him so far down too. I wasn't paying attention to my health. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely staggering enemies with Javelin is just the best thing ever. That was Penguin. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Cuties. Uh, minion, were you playing? Were you playing red? So weird how I get out of practice literally after one day of not playing. Alright. Are there any chances of paid DLC or future sequel successors in the Avian Universe? So we did release a free DLC uh, in October or November a few months ago. A bunch of months ago. Um, that was really cool. It included new lore, a new boss, a new difficulty, new game plus. Um, a bunch of new locations in the game uh, that I definitely recommend checking out called the Echo Lector Update. Um, and I mean, you'll see it if you have the game. You'll see, it's all just already part of the main game. So if you are just getting into the game now, you'll get the benefits of just having that. And that was completely free. We were not. Um, we we're never going to charge people for that. Um, whether or not there are more DLC or sequel or. Um, a spin-off or anything like that if for all of that to happen we just need more people to buy the game tell their friends about the game um get more people to try the game that's the main thing so all all things are possible when people come together and funding is is there and all of that so um just tell your friends about the game if you want to make sure that kind of stuff happens tell your friends to try the free trials you know, or if they have PlayStation Plus, to get the PlayStation Plus version of the game, and then tell others what they think. And uh, you definitely don't have to convince anyone like to like the game. They're gonna like it or not like it for themselves. That's 100% okay. We just want people to try the game, to give it a chance, because this is one of those games that you really need to experience to understand. Like the combat is just so incredibly fun and satisfying, but you have to play the combat to know that. Um, so that would be my biggest recommendation. If you want to make sure there are sequels or you know more things happen, more cool things happen for the game, tell your friends that it exists and to try it. I love that I can stagger him. It's so good. Okay, not too bad. Yeah. A prequel would be really cool too. There's been no word from Kirkin since the Palathon fell. So this is it, huh? We're what's left of the immortals? We. Hey now, alumni count. Jack of Saren! Yeah. Speaking of alum. You're to come to my flagship alone, or I'll kill everyone here. <laughs> 
I've let the Queen's Rebellion go on long enough as it is. You can try. Don't go crawling his hump, kid. Not yet. Hump is what? It we do love seeing your ideas. Um, it, we <laughs> listen no and pay attention to Discord Sandra. and Twitter and threads and Instagram yeah, and YouTube and yeah. TikTok, all the platforms. So if you guys have, and of course Twitch. Well, <laughs> I, I always forget to say Twitch because it's like a wicked. given. But basically anywhere you come and give us ideas, we are watching. Right Whether or not we can make them happen, who knows. Gonna bind him to Hopefully him. more people buy the game and then all things are possible. But definitely keep throwing out ideas because... We love hearing them. <laughs> we love coming up with and thinking about all the possibilities. Yeah, and great ideas can come from anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Weren't my first choice, but I owed the kid a favor. You mean it about him? He goes with you, he's safe. I love that. Yes. He might be my cool. favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so weird when um the first the first course. speaking of we're gonna push him in a cowboy direction <laughs> i thought it was so weird but it just works Can you think of a better way? yeah it totally I, does no dummy to figure out what sandrak's plan is the wound expanding this much this fast i think it's the collar but something about him just makes me think of like an older malcolm reynolds from firefly now look, mm. it's Dustin so Jacket. No yeah, I, I love the detail. There's a really small He's detail right. when you first meet him. He has D rings on his coat to clip that shoulder plate on oh. that he has in this scene. Like you can see the shoulder plate Jack, on him in this I'm scene, so but alive. when you meet him <sighs> in, uh, he's still wearing Where the coat, and the coat Sandra's actually flagship. has like a D ring on the front and the back <laughs> to attach that shoulder shoulder armor. Yeah, uh, that he isn't wearing when you first meet him. I think it's really cool that it's like it's down to that tiny little level of like there is that D ring there for it to attach to. Looks like his armor is missing in this. Yeah, you can still see the D ring even in this. In yeah, this yeah, it's so cool. I love that's it. called a economy of character design. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love I love Zendara's queen. Yes. Queen outfit. Yeah. That's probably one of my favorites. Yeah. When when she shows up like that for the first time, you're like, oh hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's got the power. Nice. Yes, emote you're loving the HDR. That's awesome. <laughs> Yep, I thought our game was vibrant, and then we turned HDR on. Yeah. I need to, I, I don't know if our big TV in the living room actually has HDR. But I, I really need to just connect my PS5 to something with HDR, just to see it. I mean, it is coming to PC, so I won't ever be able to stream it in HDR, because capture cards just don't really do that, plus streaming platforms don't really do that. <laughs> It wouldn't make sense I think for the, you guys. I think the game looks really good in both LDR and HDR. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. it's shocking how colorful it is in, uh, and how bright things feel sometimes in the original version. Why'd you stop but the HDR kind of pushes it even past and beyond. It is. Yeah. What do you know about the mandate? Using our I love his amulet too. It's so, so it's cool. Duty to restore it when we find there's just so much, so many little details. It's amazing. If there's more to it, tell me. One benefit of me being your grand Magnus, telling you the rest of it ain't my responsibility no more. Whatever it is, I want to get to the shrouded realm. It's one of my favorite areas in the game. I know I've been saying that in every new area, but really, I mean it about the Shrouded. I mean it about all of them. They're all beautiful. The Shrouded Realm is just so interesting. It's so different from everywhere else. Or like anywhere. That I like I've... the whale squid thing. Yes. Fly around. Yes. So cool. What are the name of those? Does anyone know if those things are actually named? Do they have a name? The whale squid? Oh yeah, yeah, those are those are called um Oh damn. Will do. Stay sharp. I'm gonna look it up because I've forgotten. I think they're called Kraken. But they may have changed the name. You're right. We usually just called them space whales. <laughs> <laughs> they they were at one point called Kraken, whether they changed their names. 
at some point. I'm not sure about. Yeah, that's one of the hardest parts about making games is how many times we change the names internally. <laughs> yeah. That's so true. What can anybody think of the one thing that got its name changed so many times? Like nobody knows what's what. Uh, I mean, like, Red Blast went through like 12 name iterations before we landed on whatever we actually landed like, on. All, all Blue Bolt, yeah, I mean, okay. so many of the spells. Don't get angry, um, but it turns out I can never remember Gurik. Oh, Gurik, yeah. Yeah, I can well, never remember Gurik. Like, oh, damn, it's just yeah. It's just Gorgon Gorgans. to me, yeah. yeah. You know, um, anyway, she ended up that's that's one of the ones I can never seem to remember. Isn't the it? other one was Colossal. Yeah, Colossal. I still think of Goliath instead of Colossal. Yeah. I asked still like Alathon. It was originally called the Citadel, and uh, oh, still a lot of things. Also, I'm going to even some assets. You know, are still names that. Do you know what? Yeah. Do you know, in the last two examples, we pushed away from those because two names specifically just to avoid religion, and then like the religious the connotations of those words, yeah. mm -hmm. which is cool. It's yeah. not as bad as you it makes what? sense. Like, like all of the name changes, all of the names insane. of things are cool. It's just confusing in in our brains when we get used to calling something by one I thing. Even think about it. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if the, the art's all called one thing, and that's being referenced by yeah. a blueprint that's called something else. That's okay. got data tables with lines called something else with a final <laughs> link to the localized <laughs> actual name that's player facing. Yeah. So we'll internally have discussions and people would be like, I'm using this file. What was this for? And then, you know, yeah, there's five different names that show up in the same chat. Yeah. I don't think the main cast had any name changes along the way. That's... Like Kirk and Sandrak, Jack, Devin, Kenzie. No. Oh, did Kenzie no. have a name change? Did she? Maybe if there's any of them, that one may have had a change. I mean, if it was, it was real early. Yeah. I mean, she was always Kenzie when I joined, and I was I was on a lot through lot three out of the five years. So. Yeah, her name was Goggles. <laughs> <laughs> that might have just been the that might have just been the temp dev name they were giving her because they knew she was going to have Goggles. But yeah, I remember Goggles was in the script, and I was like, "Who the fuck is Goggles?" <laughs> that turned in that turned into Kenzie. That's the only one I can remember. Them. Everybody else had a name in the script, right? Like from the beginning. <laughs> final, final, final V3. <laughs> I love that. Maybe Sel uh, Selko might have been another one. He may have had some different names in the script. Selko. I like how all the Rosharnian enemies were just chilling here now. Hanging out. And swearing at you. Swearing at you as you walk around. Yeah. Like, taunting you. And Risharnian. Yeah. yeah. And we don't somehow, translate it. Somehow. We, just, we just write out the Risharnian to you. Yeah. We don't translate it for you. Like Regular Risharnian speak in English sounds like swears. <laughs> yeah, it does. Or, or, or insults, rather. Absolutely. Not intentional. Yeah, did anyone I hope else, that Did anyone thinking. else watch... Before the game even came out... There was a video where some language geeks uh, specifically like were critiquing Rosharnian, even though they'd only seen like our hey, Luna. previews. Did anybody else see that? No. Oh. There was a there was a video there's a video out there on YouTube where some some guys who are really interested in made up languages talked about our made-up language even though they never talked to us about our made-up language <laughs> it's a weird thing it was like before the game even came out so there was like a video critiquing Risharnian, and it was like all they'd seen was trailers so they could i think that was like some drama between two linguists who yes. knew each other and yeah. one uh, because one of them created the Risharnian language for us the, he had a, like a rival linguist buddy who uh, was yeah so yeah it's like trying to start a whole rivalry a whole drama over uh, trying to critique the the Rosharnian. but yeah like the, both of them are in a very niche field and like to throw shade I guess <laughs> yeah and I think it had something to do with 
how they created the language. Like the method of how to create it. There was some difference of opinion there or something. How do you create a language for a video game? Like, how do you even... Do you hire someone that's an expert in that? Or is there some other way to go about it? Aubrey did contract with someone to help write it. Oh, someone cool. who specializes in writing languages and understanding. I think the key is you have to be really smart. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. You, you may have to understand and speak different languages to understand how they differ and what makes a language a language. Makes sense. Hey, Kidder Nerd. Hey, White Knight. How are you doing? Just like this. The Maladar had opened is one last gambit against the man who threatens to replace it. I want you to travel to the Shrouded Realm with me. Together? I'm always surprised when I finish my drink. Kill it. <laughs> the ship we built will take you there. Wait, you're seriously on board with this? This is Avium in a matter of days, Jack. We have to stand together on this. I can see no other way. Two things. First, you let me try to talk to it before we resort to violence. There has to be another solution. Second, I'm going to kill you when we're done. For Devin. These terms are entirely fair. <laughs> okay. Let's so, uh, Jeff go. Taylor asked how big was the core team that made the game? Go through the wound uh... to reach the shrouded realm? In a way. Yeah. Symbolically, yes. <laughs> I, mean, I think we were like 110 on at the peak. That Is sounds about right. Something like that. Um, Between 110 and 120. Yeah, we might have gone there. past 110. With will. Plus, also, we you know had some fantastic code dev partners um, that helped a lot. Uh, so you know, there's. This you know the the um, its power and our will. we really started to grow a lot ship, around when I joined at the three year mark is when we really started staffing up um, a lot and it was a five year project so. but uh, that might sound like a low number but we had a lot of uh, partner groups and people all around the world helping out to yeah, we staff got, up and get that amount of content done. Anymore. Uh, you know, like a majority of our QA was, uh, was we had uh, EA's help on QA, so um, that wasn't part of our, what we call, you know, well, we did have some fantastic internal QA as well. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of EA help for quality assurance, assurance so. quality QV, I think is what they call it, like EA's and EA's And we had, um, at one point, we had four character artists at Ascendant Studios, and over time, like near the, let me see, near, for the last year and a half, maybe even two years, we had one person. We had our lead, and we had a team called Swaim, Swaim Art over in um, Georgia, next to, in the, the far east. And they did, I, I don't know how much they did. They probably did like 80% of our models. Amazing. Wow. And they have a small team too. I think there was me. I think at one time we may have had about six or seven people from their studio. They're just incredible. What a great team. that corruption. This place is becoming a landfill. Some believe our Space whales are so cute. Even with all the teeth, they're so One cute. The, <laughs> the tentacles. Yeah. The Maladar is destroying them both. It wasn't this bad before. So cool. The Pentasad made these rules. I will unmake them. I'm gonna go feed my kitties real quick while we this continues. I'll be right back. Now that you have left Kirk and suicide cult. What's that supposed to mean? Of course. She never How we can talk about tests. Charged with sacrificing themselves to heal the Sorry, wound. No. my partner We're is done. taking care of it. <laughs> Such a or pointless me. endeavor. We were going to talk about you, but you didn't give us much time to talk about you while you were I down mean, there. I mean, I can run off again for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I do need a drink refill. I'll be right back. <laughs> Tess is awesome. Don't tell her. It's a farce. You clean up small piles of corruption here and there, but that only lasts until you're too old to serve. Then she sends you to clean up a field of it, with a ritual that will end your life, take your soul. Kirken's agenda needed orphans like yourself 
to recruit, use up and sacrifice. Um, Sandrax armor was an interesting one to develop. In the early stages, he always had an element of like this kind of like shiny chromatic look to him. You've been bred for sacrifice um, in order to grow a better garden. And the initial concepts and ideas were kind of inspired by my my dad had a motorcycle when I was a kid, and it was uh, like a 1986 Yamaha Virago, and it had the the gas tank was like a, a very rich red paint job with a high gloss finish, and then it had all this chrome all over it. Um, so his his there's still some vestige of that in the design, but it's funny where all that he even had like flame armor at one point, like metal that looked like flames. It was kind of weird. But we were always searching for, you know, designs that tried to stay a little bit more grounded and less like um, you know, like World of Warcraft, for example, or something. So we ended up toning it down. But it always had that kind of like iridescent kind of quality to it and the shininess which is it's cool beautiful did you guys design uh sandrak before you did luna's outfit as the hand like which came first uh, what's that say that again was sandrak's costume design did sandrak's costume design come before luna's costume design or did you already have luna's like her as the um hand? We had a design for Sandrak before we started Luna, but I think we nailed Luna's costume before Sandrak's. Sandrak went over kind of like a, we kind of, sometimes with like main characters, you kind of design them and we decided not to build it, just to hang on to it and, and let it sit. Um, and then when you come back to it, usually that's a great a good way to know whether it's working or whether you're excited by it or not so um, when we when we designed luna's came uh or the hand rather came very quickly like we got like one sheet of thumbnails we zeroed in on one we did another couple of rounds and, and it just kind of happened very quickly um, that was done by a fellow at room eight in ukraine actually Oh, I'm trying to remember his name. At least he admits know. he's crazy. <clears throat> oh, whoops. Who, who does? Sandrak? Sandrak. Sandrak. Oh. You just had the voice line where he's like, uh, just very possibly, yeah. Yeah, oh, like, cool. Jack says, you're insane. And he's like, yep, <laughs> pretty much. Can you hear it, Dan? No, I just know the game. Oh, you just know that part. Yeah, I mean, there's subtitles. Um, I can, I, I always say this, but um, nobody ever tells me to turn it on for you guys. I think okay. it's probably just more chill to, to have a conversation without it, but I can turn the audio on for you guys if you want. I, I, um, I've, yeah, I know all the lines and all the everything. I've played through it enough times. It's just all... I played through the first four levels three times in a day uh, oh. uh during during training like during the trying just trying to reproduce a bug it was like okay i'm gonna play these four four levels straight through over and over and over again like all just in one 24 hour sitting so uh i try to join people's streams in at least in ruins i usually don't don't join streams before training grounds is over. Just, <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't do the beginning of the game anymore. That's understandable. This place. I just, I'm like in awe of the clouds. There was literally a time I said earlier that I'll leave the game running sometimes just as background. This is one of the things I left running. These are so funky and the purples are so beautiful. And then the whales just fly around. It's amazing. I feel like you guys just went that, crazy here. I love that big rip in the sky. That's like, is that where the font was? Yeah. Is the light pouring through it and the font is that shape? And it's just like, it's not a sun. It's like a hole, you yeah. know? It's just... So cool. I always thought that there was some kind of connection between the fonts and Avium. 
and you know magic cycles through the shrouded realm into avium and back into the shrouded realm i think this is one of which ways the magic goes from one place to another those yep. shapes yeah. in the world. I remember we we had also been talking about like adding the other sort of shapes the right of the fonts uh, yeah. to the sky in other you know sections because you're still only in a very small part of the shrouded room. I'm kind of glad we didn't though because it almost it would seem a little bit more contrived. Like I like yeah. to think that maybe just like moon phases you would see. You know, oh. the, tri the triangle in the sky at one point and then at some point. It, it uh, morphs friend. into a different shape or something, or, or it closes up so and appears somewhere else as something different. I think that would be more this magical feeling. Sandra, kill. No. The Maladar oh, is destroying our world. Uh, worlds. He wants if he's right snuggles. about you, maybe you can help us. Post-lunch post snuggles. <laughs> My friend Rook, I mean, he's in a lorry, and, well, we were... Every time he does that, I'm like, what? You down, rude creature. With the Thrada call, I refuse you. Rude creature. <laughs> like, he's mad because the Pentasaur is rude to him. <laughs> it just, like, goes to show how delusional Sandrak is. I mean, it's kind of on brand, you know? It is. It totally is. But his brand is he's just Delulu. Like, that's... <laughs> Why did you send me he's the epitome of fake it till you make it gone too far. <laughs> this is full on megalomania. Yeah. It's just taken to the extreme. What are you trying to yeah. Say? Uh, this is just so beautiful. I've seen this architecture. He's such a nice, mellow guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I met him at the launch party. I got to hang out with him for a while cool. and talk to him. And he's just like the mellowest, coolest dude. <laughs> Uh, he played such a great villain. Um, he's just, yeah, he had a great time in that party too. It was a great party. Uh -huh. like, yeah, he just, he nails the character though. I mean, Sandrak's lines are just. I remember, it's so funny to think about all those things that were like, took so long to come together. His beard, when his beard finally worked, it was. <laughs> <laughs> he had the beard that wasn't attached to his face and he talked for the whole time. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> the longest time. His his face would move, his beard would stay still and it, it was like the when the beard finally worked it was so fantastic. That was a there was annoying, also some weird things very with his eyeballs. Bug. Yeah. Right, I need yep. to just fight these guys. Oh the glowing eyeballs. Those just kept coming back. No, there. It was like his entire skeleton, or like on his head, was going inside out, and, oh, no. and like it was just his eyeballs like sticking out ahead. It was in a when lot the armor, in the early when the armor came off. Yeah, <laughs> the armor would come off, and he'd be like this inverted face with the eyeballs. Like, had like a Mars, a Mars attacks vibe. Yeah, where yeah. you could see his teeth and his gums and no. the eyeballs. The eyeball. <laughs> Yeah, we made like a blooper reel of all of the sort of silly bugs in, in our game, um, much like uh, uh, God of War did. And so we have a, a low seal channel on our internal Slack where we'll post all that stuff and someone finally made a compilation. And there are just so many great little like weird rigging bugs in there or characters just freaking out over collision and just like spiraling up into the air. <laughs> uh Sexy Minion asked, did anyone else play without really using spells or just me on my first run? I've definitely seen plenty of people just do the pew pew and that's all they want to do. They don't want to do all the other stuff. Obviously, like, we force your hand uh, for puzzles, but uh, it's, it was kind of important for us for combat to be able to be done, uh, you know, just how you want to play it. So, you know, we obviously you have to switch colors uh, for some oh, some things but uh yeah i mean um i i find that like uh i can't play on the harder difficult i i obviously like i've just i don't know if i could go down to just blue. but for actually on that sort of thing for a long time uh the blue blue bolt you know trike bolt uh 
you, you, you know, one of the things we had as a challenge was like Shike Bolt was so good, you could just play the whole game with it and not change, right? And so like getting the mix of how much uh, do you force the player to switch things up and how much do you let them uh, uh, just do what they want to do and like um, you know, there's, this, like, there's a balance you have to strike because if you're too heavy handed about it then certain players will be turned off right? and, um, yeah we, we definitely had a you could play the entire game start to finish with shield and blue bolt and nothing else and just rampage for quite a long time long time yeah well, I think it was because it felt good, right? Like, there were, we couldn't nerf the spell. We had to bring every other spell up to be good enough to compete with it. Because it, it was, like, it was in the game early. It felt great. And it was, like, there was never any, like, well, we're going to make this feel worse. We, ha we, we had to make everything else feel good enough that you would choose it over that spell. That spell was sort of an anchor in the game. Um, so there, that was a challenge, honestly, like to make you want to pick up a javelin, to make you want to. We also didn't have armor and a lot of the other concepts in early that really exactly. yeah. solidified the combat system. Um. I think in a way that kind of makes the game pretty accessible too, you know, for people that might, uh, in the heat of battle, have trouble switching between things and trying to think about all that while they're playing. You know, you can't you can play the game uh, with a, a fewer kind of like tools or accessories. Yeah, or but it's like it's fun. It's really fun to see. Like I saw a video of someone playing, and they were doing things that I couldn't even. I, I never even thought about <laughs> just like they would jump off something and then start floating and then use the lash and then do the the dash oh my god like chaining all these things together and i'm like how do you even how do you even think of that before you do it it's yeah. pretty nuts that that player is on new game plus 33. yeah oh my god i saw so, them but, i saw them playing the right? fangs yeah, Notorious, yeah. They're on New Game Plus 33. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. They're so good. I, I like, And they're on that ultra, ultra wide screen, too. That's just gigantic. Uh, yeah, oh, no, oh, I, I, I um, started again. They, I, yeah. Um, I think they were, like, yesterday, they were trying to beat the speed run on their, on their stream. That's so cool. Yeah. I need health crystals, <laughs> like desperately. Yeah, new game plus 33. So you can keep doing more and more new game pluses if you want. Yeah, I mean, there isn't new content after the first time. I mean, like uh, essentially like new game plus two, you'll get about a one full talent tree worth of talents in the first playthrough if you're fairly thorough um you get a full all the talent trees uh full by the end of new game plus if you're thorough so like after new game plus two if you're playing it you know you've got everything you've got everything upgraded and then after that it's like i think i, I think maybe around new game plus four four or five you can have every single piece of gear upgraded which uh, some players have done or have every piece of gear upgraded all the way um but 33 yeah you're just you're just playing the content because you love it at that point i knew i was gonna die that time i just wanted to get some health crystals uh. oh i didn't know i could disrupt it Okay. 
This is a tough fight with health crystals. <laughs> Without health crystals, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna live, but. Oh, yeah. The um, damage over time on the Leladon spit is so deadly. Yeah. Um, it, it is like one of those. Uh, the, you have that death storm mechanic that, that like stops you from dying but the DOT will get you and um, I, I think that's important because like that really uh, is used to ramp up difficulty in certain fights like it's a, a big part of what makes the shrouded howler so much more challenging is that the Slaylodons are popping up on the side and they have that DOT that will kill you because um it, yeah, they, they're nasty. They are nasty. They drain your mana. So they drain your mana, too. So when they hit you, your mana ticks down. So you yeah. have a spells cast. Like, they're, they're, yeah. Leladons are another character that had a different name before. Their names were much more literal. Yep. They were called Corruption Worms before. Yeah. But when their lore got updated to something really cool... Their name's changed. <laughs> Just visually, they're my favorite design. I, I love the way they look. Yeah. Sometimes you end up with enemies no. that um, are inspired just by a concept or an idea. No. Um, and yeah. sometimes you... Um, you're trying to fill in a hole in your combat or game experience by uh, designing an enemy that you that acts differently, that challenges you differently. Um, I'm not sure which the corruption worm I mean Layla Dawn was. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm just gonna wander around and try to get some health crystals before I go back and try that again because that is just. Not happening right now. Of course, there are not very many health crystals nearby. There's gotta be some. Aha! Okay. Already something. Can't go that way. And she's like, you need to pause whatever you're doing and pet me right now. Have I tried giving it chin scratches? Um, I don't know if it would let me. <laughs> but I'll take it under advisement. <laughs> okay. She's very, very pro at getting her tail right in my face. And leaving some kitty hair. And I'm just like wiggling my nose for the next hour and it's adorable. Are you really gaming if you're not getting your hand head butted off the controller by a cat? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you can call that gaming. <laughs> okay, maybe up there. Ah. There's something. Okay, we have three health bars now. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, we're having a cat moment for just a moment. There's still free demo. Yes, uh, a little hope for the demo. It's still on PC Impulse Prints. So there is a free demo on Steam. If you just search for Immortals of Avium, you'll see the demo. Uh, there is a free trial on PlayStation and a free trial on Xbox. And at the end of all three of those, there is a bonus discount if you decide you want, you like the game and you want to purchase it. There's like an extra 5% discount. Um, is that on the Epic Game Store too? Uh, no. I don't think it's on Epic. Yeah, I think it's just Steam. If you're searching for it on Epic or the EA Play app, unfortunately, those do not have a free demo. But if you would rather have the game on one of those platforms, you can still play the demo on Steam and then purchase it on one of those platforms. You just wouldn't get the discount. Unfortunately, the only way to do that is to go through Steam. Just limitations of first parties and purchase platforms and all that jazz. 
Um, the, so on Steam, it should be on the same page as the game itself. So like if if you look, scroll, you go to the main Immortals of Avian page and you scroll down, it should just be a different line uh, under the game itself. There should be like yeah. a Yeah, so it's right demo. here. Yeah. Yeah, so this is just the store page for the game. I literally just went from my library to the store page. So if you just search for Mortals of Avium, it will come up. Um, the first option, it's already in my library, so the first option will be to buy the full game, but then just scroll a little bit lower and you'll see it's just a free demo download. Thank you, Minion. Also posted the link. But yeah, it's just on the same page. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot ignore Cat. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Why don't you snuggle in the nice heated bed? <laughs> there you go. She's like, but I want your laugh. <laughs> You're not providing me with the thing that I'm asking for, human. <laughs> this cat. It's taken her like a year to really get used to the new baby cat. And she's... She was really lovey before we got the new baby cat, and I think it's taken her a year to basically forgive us. <laughs> so now that she's lovey again, I'm like, I feel really guilty if I can't provide what she's asking for. Yeah, Impulse Prince. And if you love it, let us know. Whatever you think, let us know. We definitely want to hear from you. If you, any of you guys have not already found the Immortals of Avium Discord, I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, Yeah, Aaron, yeah, uh, she's on the second to last chapter. So if you're trying to avoid spoilers, you might want to. Yeah, sorry. Uh, There's definitely some story spoilers coming up. I am a little bit stuck on this fight, so. <laughs> it might be a minute. Oh, God. Get it? I think I got it. Oh. Okay. I feel like if I don't have at least a couple health crystals, the nerves get me like I'm gonna die for sure. I don't have enough health, even though I still have health. <laughs> it's in my head. Okay, that was pretty good. So yeah, um, there are more and more spoilers that are gonna be sort of popping up uh, at this point. Oh, cool, Impulse Prince! Yeah, definitely. Check it out. See how it runs. That was before the Aurora came to Avium? That's like, I don't even know how many thousands of years ago. Okay. Um. Onwards. This is all so gorgeous. So what made you guys um, use all of these different crystals everywhere? Like there's there's a lot of red crystal in Kalthus, and purple crystals here, and just crystals are kind of present in various forms throughout the game. Where did that idea come from? I think early on, Dave, we just kind of uh, like got really 
interested in crystals and in like minerals. Uh, you have that story about going to uh, the hotel lobby that had the crazy um, crystal back wall. And I just remember we had a lot of boards, um, you know, like Pinterest boards and mural boards that was just collecting various crystal and you know, geo reference. And so we knew we wanted that to be part of the game because they are kind of like like battery packs or, or something that can store magic that can um, you know heal you and, and you know help with all of your magical powers and so we just wanted to have that also present in all the different environments and you know changing the colors was also just a good way to kind of make the color palette of each level very distinct so this is is definitely the sort of purplish blue uh, map and something that you hadn't seen before like we wanted this just this shrouded realm to feel very weird and mysterious but also colorful um, and so it's kind of mixing both the, the corruption which is kind of overtaking everything with the uh, the crystals that are still kind of growing and these sort of like weird magical plants that are only kind of used in this particular map yeah, for me, I mean, it really all started when I read that game design document that Brett made before we started making the game. <clears throat> I, I can't remember how much of it was in there, but uh, definitely there were crystals involved in the sigils. Like, all sigils have a crystal. Oh. Uh, and um, the way I like to think about it in the world is crystals, they're not really the source of magic, but they do contain magic. They either absorb it or contain it somehow, almost like batteries or something. We also think of them as lenses, like magic can flow through them and uh, types of crystals of different colors can, can filter magic in different ways or utilize different properties of magic. So um, that's kind of where it all started and it just kind of grew from there, I suppose, as crystals do. And we had an amazing material artist and tuck artist who really just kept evolving uh, what the crystal shader looked like and just got better and better over the course of the development. Oh. You know, we um, tried to incorporate it into. It's funny people talk about uh, there's a conversation about Rook eating crystals with his big teeth and there's actually at one point there was a concept of you were filling crystals with magic to distract the Alori uh, that didn't really play out nearly as well as what we ended up with. So we ended up with a much simpler design that actually sold the story with so much better. But uh, you know there was actually a hey, the crystals like they've been there, you know, they're, they're worked into the gameplay as well as just the, the art and the visuals too, right? Like you tried to, it's such a big part of the world. Like even the binding stone itself is like an etched and like engraved and filigreed metal wrapped around it piece of crystal, right? Like it's a, uh, I think in the lore book, it talks about they grow out of where the um, ley lines come close to the land also like it's like an incrustation in magic that happens like around the ley lines specifically Wait, wait. Tell Tess, we gotta, gotta <laughs> concentrate on this one. This is such a hard, yes. is such a hard fight with three colors of the salt at the same it's time. Rough. It's so rough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they're just, they're so evasive. Yeah, um, they really The green are. ones, the way they like do their oh. flutter when they shoot, um, they yeah. like, they do the side, it's like sideways flick as they fire. Like it's, it's like their dodge and their fire are the same motion. And it just, oh man. Yeah. Okay. That might help a little bit. Um, a 
acquiring talents unavailable in combat. Oh, darn. Uh, and I can't leave. I remember this was so hard and you're like just trapped. <laughs> um, okay, I need to run somewhere. I think I had a really hard time with this the first time I did it also. Actually. This is definitely one of the fights where using your fury spells is <laughs> really the way to go. Like, the green ones are way easier to clear with a torrents. The blue ones are way easier to clear with uh, shatter. Um, How does shatter hit then... them if they're in the air, though? Well, it, it so... The, okay, the, it, in this case, it's pretty hard because you have to kind of pull them close to you. But uh, Shatter has, like, um, you know, it, it's a sphere traveling along the ground. So there is a sphere above the ground that can hit their feet. Um, so you can still hit all the hovering things with them. Um, which is why sometimes you feel like you jump over uh, and uh, constructs Shatter and it still clip you. Because they, you know, um, it has, like, a bit of a space of the ground where it explodes. We both shot the rock there. <laughs> it looks like it waved at me before it went away. Okay. Uh, I know more of them will spawn as soon as I go back up there, though. I need Ooh. health. Desperately. And there just isn't any. Sorry, I'm kind of cheesing it with this little spot, but there's it's the only way I'm gonna live. Uh, okay. I actually survive. I think. Maybe. Possibly. Uh oh, there's stuff down there. How did I miss the red crystal that literally has exactly what I need? Right here. <laughs> Blended in <laughs> with the purple. Random, no, we wouldn't we wouldn't do that. <laughs> Reduced effectiveness of Jazz's G spot, oh no. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> um you know, uh, there's. it's interesting as you go through development of a game, there's sort of an attitude change where you're like, for a long time, you're like, we need to remove every possible spot where you can cheese. Or every, oh, you can get into this spot here. And then when you get close to the end, you're like, ah, you know, if people are struggling, maybe they need it. <laughs> like maybe we should make it like you know maybe we should leave a spot where the there is a you know it's a really hard fight maybe there should be a spot where if you want to cower in the corner and 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 just make them all stream through here because that's all you can do to get through maybe we should do that you know that you um it, there, there's sort of a balance like well, we work really really hard uh to shrink what we call shrink wrap the levels right like to get them so that you you're not you can't really get out of bounds. You can't uh, break the story because you went this way instead of that way. Like there's so there was so much work uh, to cover all that stuff, you know. So um, 
yeah, especially with as complicated as our story is, we have so many things that happen uh, just kind of in flow. Um, so uh, getting all that stuff to not not break <laughs> is uh, is definitely part of the was part of the challenge of shipping the game, I think. But uh, what do you got left? Good question. Um, how many how many talent points do you have? I can't five. I can't read. Wow, you yeah. got that thing it's filled five? out. Yeah, oh, five, I mean, five left. you don't have the green capstone. Oh, you have five left to get, huh. or five points to spend. Uh, the green capstone is fantastic. Like you put a limpet on somebody, and then you do like twenty five percent with green. It's it's great. Uh... Yeah, I um I haven't leveled up my lash because I just. I find I'm actually using Disrupt a lot more this playthrough, which is cool. I think I could definitely stand to level up. Well, the nice more. thing about the green capstone is it works. Uh, it doesn't care which which uh, control spell you use. Oh. So if you use, it, it doesn't just require limpets. You can, you, it, it, if you lash someone or disrupt them, the status effect is still applied. You just have to use the green sigil okay. to get the damage boost. So. Um, but you, you know, if you lash someone or you disrupt them, you still do more damage with green if you're if you have it. So cool. Okay. Onward. This world is so beautiful. I still wish we had more talents that intersected with melee. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the melee in this game feels really, really satisfying if if you get good at it, which is very, very doable. But it's just a little bit tricky if you're not used to using it. Because there's the like... melee build in gear can be extraordinarily strong. Like the there's a melee sort of set of gear and talents you can do even in just regular new game, like before you not even new game plus. Where you can punch out Sandra, like just just punch it, because <laughs> the the punch does all color damage, so you can punch your shield, and so uh, you can just punch Sandra out of the game. That went well. <laughs> that went better than I thought it would. <laughs> I thought they were gonna wreck me, but it was fine. <laughs> Okay, Rainbow Fist of Doom. I like it. I like it. Oh. Javelin could be a greatsword or something. Well, I mean, I would love a greatsword in addition to Javelin, but I don't want Javelin to go away. I love Javelin. I was so sad that on my first playthrough, I didn't find any really good Javelins to use um, because I... Like I know, I know where things are, but when I'm not streaming, when I'm not like just playing through the game this way, I generally tend to use the nice dev hacks that let you get around a little bit more easily. But that just means you never know where anything is because you haven't run through the actual level like the way you're intended to run through the actual level that often. So I just didn't know where stuff was. I didn't. I would miss it running past it all the time, and I still had a really good time. I was using uh, a really cool green sigil and just using green magic more but this playthrough has been so fun because i've just totally gone ham on this javelin really satisfying <laughs> okay um one of these locations ends up being a really insane fight i think it's this one with the archons I know there's stuff around here. You help me later. That's awesome, Diamond Diggity! I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for stopping by the stream. I'm a javelin Come sniper, so. <laughs> to me. Your minds are young and your fears unfounded. Our journey upward is a good thing. 
What was the inspiration for the Lori? Hmm. Like as a visually or as oh, a character? I guess both. I mean, visually for sure, but. The pentasaur hmm. makes of the Aloria humans a. That's a correct question. I mean, that was kind of. They were always present in the story. Uh, as sort of these creatures that could. I think he had like at one point it was kind of like the the carbon scrubbers of of EVM where they're able to recycle the magic, and they have like just that whole history of them that you like learn over the course of the game was something that um, Brett just had written in his yeah sixty page design doc where he'd pretty much figured out like the world and what the main story was and what all the main characters were, and we did change some stuff but we really didn't deviate from that kind of core message. Of, um, they like the, the core arc the of the story and then and Dave it was up to Dave to kind of like figure out how we wanted them to look well we we didn't want everyone in AVM to look human and these were the perfect um, opportunity to do that um, I, I don't I'm not quite 100 percent sure if this is outdated lore but as the Aloria are the children of the Penasad, and they had gone through a life cycle, much like the humans in Avium, where um, magic was put out of balance or whatever, and um, they are, in a sense, they exist the way they do now due to some kind of event gone wrong in the past. Um, so they needed to feel kind of monstrous. Um, I, I don't know, some inspirations, I guess, for visuals would be um, Tim Curry's The Darkness character in Legend. I've always liked that. And that old cartoon Gargoyles was always really cool. And um, Jason's not here to speak about it, but you know, Mass Effect had a, it was a Mass Effect that had that character, Gareth. You know, he was, he's an alien, yes. but um, yeah, th there was this kind of uh, desire to make a creature, but also one that was more intelligent than the U.S. Um, and has, has quite a backstory. So I don't know that all that stuff kind of came into play. I think it's obvious what the other influences are once you get later on in the game. Yeah. Don't want, don't want to spoil it, but... Uh. Oh, is this the, the big Levadon, little big final Levadon fight is the main story? Yes. Ow. Good luck. Thank you. I think the javelin is kind of the right spell for them because it hits them in the mouth really well and they stun off of it really easily. Um, like they're they definitely are one of those. They're they're really good to headshot. Like yeah, it's really the right way to beat them. I think the way I did it the first time I played through this part was lots and lots of torrent. Yes. That's also good because if it dives, it'll still track him as long yeah. as you're locked on. So. Ah. There's two of them over there. Me javelin you. Uh. 
your javelin is very impressive, honestly. Like, I am not, I am not good with a javelin. <laughs> yeah, I find this fight incredibly difficult, and you are nailing it. <laughs> Thank you. At least there's somewhere to hide in this one. The other one, I just, like, literally couldn't do anything. Oh, no, 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 you don't. Oh, my man. <laughs> It's fine. Drink all my oh. mana. That that uh, the vacuum spell is is also the time to really lay into him because it leaves his mouth open the whole time. Yeah, so you could just really hurt him. That's a really good point. Same thing with Blue Magni, uh, the the time to really open up on a Blue Magni is if he misses you with the Vortex, because he stands there for a long time Yeah. he misses you. But if you get caught in the Vortex, you will really trouble. Because he will just turn you into a pincushion. Oh. Ah, one more. Almost, almost. Oh. <laughs> so much tension. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh my god, that was intense. <laughs> it's such a good fight, though. I love, I love good fights in video games. Good fights in beautiful locations, and like I definitely played that pretty safe and just hid behind these columns. But I've seen players jump around like crazy in this arena and like hover and just there are people out there that can do really epic things with our game and it's really amazing. I think one of the really cool things about the combat in this game in particular is that there's such a wide variety of play styles that can be accommodated and builds that can be created. There's so many different ways to do stuff that even just like if you play through it more than once and you use a different sigil, it'll feel like a very different combat experience the whole way through. Is really neat. Okay. Um, I want more mana crystals. <laughs> that thing definitely sucked me dry. Okay. A little bit more. Just gotta find all the spots. Loots. I belong to me. <laughs> okay, I feel better about my chances now. I missed one. A little bit further. I like how they're clearing out corruption Our as they tell us the story. Rest. <laughs> they will cherish us, the children of the Pentacide. That hasn't aged well. As soon as humans encountered the Alori, we started slaughtering them. don't want to go fast through this level because it's so cool but i also really want to show off the final fight <laughs> i don't think we're gonna make it today though easy do you mean the the big uh archon because that's next uh no i meant the final fight with sandrak oh yeah that's 
That's a bit of waste, though. Yeah, the Archon, I think, will definitely make If I can figure out where I'm supposed to go. I think I'm going the right way. It's okay. Should, uh, at me like, hmm? You should fight the member of the six that's right here. Oh. It's uh, uh, underneath the. It, it's really hard to spot. It's basically directly underneath the arena that the, um, the uh -huh. big construct is in. It's like a uh, little cave. So you got to go one level down from the entrance, and then there's a. It's on the left side. Wait, below this it's so hard, arena? It's so hard to spot. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so if you go to where the entrance to the where you fight the the big archon is, there's like basically like it's underneath that. So you have to like, if you if you're facing that, it's that right there, down in that area, and somewhere. It's really hard to see, but there's a uh, there's a, a little cave on the left side that is uh, how you like get into it. That oh, way. It's so hard to spot. Um. If you open up the map, so where the big black spot in front of you is, is the arena where you fight. So it's basically directly in front of you. You were looking at it. Okay. It's just really hard to see. Yeah, it's a cave there's in a, the wall. There's a little cave in the wall. The cliff. Yeah, oh. in the cliff. <laughs> Second. That has knocked my You just got to have faith. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's there. It's just really, it's like, it's very subtle. Um, you're saying is I need to jump all the way down there? Uh, no, not that far. No, it's it's. it's I, yeah, it's more. There. Oh, it's right there. Okay, yeah, it's right by that pillar. You're look, oh, you're that. At that pillar right there. Yeah, that pillar mm -hmm. right there. When you get closer, you'll see a bunch of. Sort yeah, of that doesn't even look stuff. like an entrance. It's, there it is. Yeah, yeah. that is. <laughs> That is very tricky to find, but very cool. Okay. How beautiful is this room that you guys totally hid from anyone and everyone? <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Oh yeah, Zenith. Yeah. I think I've done this fight, but I think I've only done it like once. <laughs> Uh, I guess I don't actually need anything. We luck, chat. You love how tucked away it was? Yeah, like super, super. I think because of the, the fact that it's not lit up at all, like it's kind of just the color of the rest of the Shrouded Realm and there's like the red leafy stuff kind of growing around it. It just looked like more of the wall to me. So I didn't even realize. That was intentional. Yeah. Uh, the level designer specifically requested it be uh, very much hidden. So you have to just kind of go down and explore that little ledge. But then as you start to, I think if you kind of hover out, you can see a few of this like magic plants sort of glowing and emanating light. Mm -hmm. You butt. Wow, you just juked the whole cloud. <laughs> I always get under cover as soon as he does that. I'm always like, oh god, it's the, it's the swarm. you just like, no, I'm just going to juke the whole thing. Yeah, that's the run away, run away moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh wow, you're tearing him up. Oh my god. Nope. Oh, it's just wrecking him. Oh, yeah, but he keeps pulling the cover away. That's the, that's the tricky part. Yeah. Is as, he, as he escalates, he just keeps getting rid of all the walls. As long as he doesn't throw me off. Oh, crap. Um. Oh, 
can't see. No. Fighting for our lives here. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. First try. <laughs> Javelin wrecked. <laughs> For some enemies, it really is just <laughs> ideal. <laughs> that was really cool. Yeah. Didn't even have to get the red crystal in mid fight or anything. <laughs> yeah. Did you have, you have three of the seven done now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was that's pretty good. I usually leave them till the very end and then backtrack, but this has been really fun doing them as I like, kind of move through the game. Welcome yeah, I back have to grind you. for them. Uh, I, I have the technique for Azakel down, where I can be. I could beat Azakel with starting gear without him beating me if I needed to. As long as I had spells. Yeah. Uh, uh, Plus help. Riptide, man. Riptide is great. Love, love, love these. Uh. Shroud Fane. I keep wanting to call them Shatter Fanes now. It took me the longest time to switch in my brain from Shroud Fanes to Shatter Fanes, and now I can't switch back. <laughs> it's like in Souls games. I call everything that it acts like a bonfire a bonfire, even if it's not a bonfire. <laughs> Technically. This room is so beautiful. That was awesome. Okay. Archon fight incoming. Oops. Yeah, this is so hidden. It's so cool. Just stepping into some flames. Yeah, that is so tricky to find. That's cool. Now, how do I get back up there? <laughs> um, do I get back up there? There we go. Okay. All right. One more big fight. Coming at you. This area is just... I think this... I think I might have done it row over there, but one of these spots... Maybe it was here. I just left sitting, <laughs> looking at the beautifulness. For a while. Okay. There's a good question. What games does this get compared to the most? Oh, that is a good question. <clears throat> I hear the words, um, and, and for a myriad of different reasons, but I hear the word Destiny a lot. I hear the word Call of Duty a lot. I hear Bioshock a lot. Um, there were some Doom. others. Doom, yes, Doom. Uh, in terms Doom of gameplay style and the speed, yeah. Um, so yeah, those are a few. Metroidvania also, that one comes up. Yep, as a descriptor. Um. And you know, I I just I've been around first person shooters since first person shooters were around. I mean I remember Duke Nukem 3D, you know, uh <gasps> so 
you know, um, I played. Although that whatever. one person stumped us, they they told us about a game called like Cyber Mage. Cyber Mage. Or something. Yeah, yeah, Cyber Mage. I was like, whoa, that is old. Uh, yeah, Missed that one. you know, I they've they've been my favorite genre as long as they've been a genre. They've been one of my favorites. I played, you know, I've played so many over the years. It's like it's hard to pick where any given influence came from as much as it's like uh not i just love this style of game so i still remember playing duke Nukem uh, and walking the, in front of a mirror for the first time and being like remember Whoa. what's scattered around the arena test um <laughs> the arena the arena is scattered full of alt crystals oh the, okay okay Pro tip, thank you. Yeah, there's like, they, I think they respawn, actually, over the course of the fight if you use them up. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> that was that was unfair. The best thing to do is uh is wait until right before he fires and do it yourself so yeah. that you hit his his eye with the ult. So then he'll he'll take a knee. The best way is just press K. <laughs> <laughs> alt K, Alt K. It's not I'll just K anymore. Okay, I can also hide in here. That's good. I think his stomp can hit you through the wall. Really? Yeah. Uh, leave me alone, you big bully! I love the little rotating platforms in this level. Yeah. Unless they get in your way. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm not going to make it. Um, go in this way. There we go. <laughs> okay. That's the way to make this work. Thank you. <laughs> just just a few dominions. I always forget to use it. Like, it's so good. But I forget that I have it or I'm saving it, like, too much for whatever I might need it for. But then I end up never using it. <laughs> okay. All right. That's why when I, whenever I realize I have it, I just use it right yeah, away. Because yeah. I know at the moment I'm supposed to use it, I always forget about it. So just use it. You can get it really fast if you build for it. Yeah. It's the non-obvious spec, but you can pop off. Like, especially if you've beaten the Echolector and you get the Echolector gear on top of it, you can do so much damage on top of that. Like, there's a, the Echolector gear that we added is all, like, plus immolate damage and immolate crit damage, uh, which we didn't have anywhere else in the game. Uh, so the actual, like, immolate Glory build, Penisod I think the Wounds Edge... Now. No, there's, like, there's a red sigil that gives plus 200% red uh, immolate generation. Oh. So you can kind of get to the point where you're just blasting everything with immolate all the time. Almost, uh, that also means that you have to be good enough to beat the Echo Lector Dan. 
That's yeah. true. That's true. Which is and nice. I am not. I am <laughs> not. I need that K key. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. Patrick didn't pull any. Patrick did not pull any punches with that character. He just <laughs> went all out. He just went all out. He was like, "Yeah, you want a really, really, really hard boss? Okay, I can do that." <laughs> didn't even give them a chance. All we saw was that they drained magic, so we killed. So I'm about to talk spoilers. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the story stuff that we're kind of moving through. Um, so just fair warning to anyone listening or watching now or later. Spoilers. Spoiler talk for like you five minutes. So if you're watching on the video, just move ahead a few minutes. Um, but basically the story here is that the Alori were supposed to help balance magic users that were supposed to be everyone. Like the whole, the, the Pentasod's plan was to give magic to everyone. And as humans used magic, the Alori were supposed to help consume it from the world pretty much and send it back to the shrouded realm so that it could be renewed and put back in the world via the fonts the sacred fonts and the ley lines and humans when they met the alori were like who are these people they eat magic they're taking our magic away and so they immediately just fought them and killed them and you know, push them to live underground and not have access to magic or people or anything. And that's part of what caused the wound was there was no balance because the Alori weren't allowed to do what they're supposed to do and because humans treated them so badly. So focused on holding on to their magic so tightly that they didn't realize they were taking it away from themselves and killing the world. <laughs> okay, spoiler chat slightly over. <laughs> this is so beautiful. It's funny too, because every time I play the game just like freely like this, it seems even more beautiful to me than the last time I played it. I mean, you guys have been making improvements the whole time, so that's part of it, but it's just... Just a joy to be in this universe. Going in. Jack, it weakens before me. Together we can finish it. No, don't fight it at all. Listen, the Penisod showed me how to- Resist its illusions. It will show you anything it needs to survive. Don't be a coward, boy. Sandra, will you listen to me? Stop attacking it! You came here to help me! I came here to help you fix the wound. God damn it! You're gonna get everyone killed, asshole! <sighs> Those oaths really have teeth, Ted. Damn. Oh, shit! Silly small humans. I like how he's just eating eggs in yeah. this scene. Alarming. And in the caldera. Whatever it's southern, I ain't buying. Do we know what those eggs are for? Originally, it, when we used to have, um, what was that small little creature? The grub, grub shell? Oh, the grub shell. That we made, it was going to, like, there were going to be a lot of them kind of living in those caves, and so the eggs were... 
I always thought it was for baby blood lashes. Along the way, you forgot I those, those little blood that. lashes that you see flying and that, when they open the door in the scene. Way back, the mm -hmm. the fly off. Be between us is all gone. He sees me as one of the good ones. New slash pissant. You got, you got good reason to hate me. Do we actually see hate blood lashes on the game? I can't remember. Mm -mm. They made it in. Well, yeah. I what you just said, like the, they do fly out when they open the doors to the Caldera it. Overlook. For what we did. Oh. They're so That's tiny nice, compared mm -hmm. to their the full growth size. <laughs> it's for you. That doesn't they sound as at all. Unfortunately, a lot of things get cut from games because at some point you have to double down and put the time and effort in to make things good on a smaller subset of things. Otherwise, you just ship a lot of stuff that's unfinished. Um, so we had a lot of things and a lot of ideas for this world and, and for the gameplay and characters and worlds that we were... To my we chose not to ship because right it wouldn't be good enough. And that way we get to save it for later. <laughs> That's the exciting positive part of it about it. I do miss having the boars running around in Lucian just outside of Crown's Gate because mm -hmm. There's two blue constructs that show up, and at one point I was like I kited one of them kind of behind the houses, and I killed him. And I was looking around for the other one, and I kind of go over to this like little farm house, and there's just a boar, like a pig, just attacking the uh, the, the blue construct, and he was doing a pretty good job. I mean, he, he was knocking down his health, and he, so I had my little like pig buddy. It was um, oh. giving me an assist there. Don't mess with pigs, man. They're vicious. They mm -hmm. can be. They're also they really be. smart. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, really well, actually, my father-in-law had a pig. Its name was Corky, I think. <laughs> so cute. It was a giant black pig. Wow. Yeah. That would be really cool to just run around Lucium in various parts of the world and encounter like various fauna, <laughs> pretty much. You talk about pigs being smart. My wife does not like pigs because she had to grow up with one. I oh. mentioned her dad had a pig, and one day she was sitting on her bed eating like a freezy pop, <laughs> and the pig walked in. It was like, I want that freezy pop. And she did not give the pig the freezy pop, so it bit her. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, oh no. That's when they're smart enough to do things where they're like, "No, I want that. You can give it to me." Oh yeah, you're not gonna give it to me. Okay, I'll do this to you. Maybe you'll give it to me after that. I don't know if he ended up getting it or not, but they do have thoughts. Might as well. Getting else? close to full. Yeah. I well, how many, how well. many points do you have? Uh, no points left. I just used them all. But okay. uh, what my total is? Where is that, actually? Oh, jeez. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not sure. I started the game with 44 ascensions. Like, I started New Game Plus with 44 ascensions. Uh... I'm not sure how many I have now. <laughs> I really like the fact that you can, you can, um, you know, you fill out your tree in one way and then you get to a part of the game where maybe your build isn't working for you and you can change it. Mm -hmm. That is super cool. Yeah. We didn't always have that, but when we changed that, it, I think it really opened up the game a little bit. Yeah. There's so, there really are so many different ways that you can play the game um, that are really satisfying and fun. It just depends on your play style and the gear that you found and chosen to upgrade. To finally join us. What talents you combine with other notion. talents. They'll be here. I'm done waiting. Air commanders, prepare to join the Rasharnian assault. Sir, you can't do this. The Pentasod isn't causing the Maladar. It's suffering. Nobody from listens to Jack. The binding you think I don't know all of this? He's insane. He literally believes the Pentasod went berserk because it's jealous. 
Then why are you joining him? The fonts are gone. The pentasad that made them is broken, unanchored, imploding, and all of Avium is crumbling apart as it lashes out. Nothing else matters. Lucium isn't joining Sandrak's Mad Crusade, Jack. We're using it so we can cauterize the wound at the source. What a crock of shit. Glory! <laughs> Sorry for this crashing. is spoilers. Yeah, this <laughs> is super spoilers. Sorry, guys. I should have warned. The kid says you need but it's still a very, very fun yeah. cinematic right reveal and, and everything. what help could you possibly give us? Look, lady, I ain't happy to be here either. We've had a bone to pick with your people for, I don't know, a few thousand years. I like how he's years. actually straight with her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> This is how it's supposed to be. Whatever magic the Magni take from the ley lines, the Elori funnel. I like the way Rook talks. Yeah. No corruption. No wound. Him and Thaddeus interacting yeah. is like my favorite couple in the game. Yeah, yeah. Just their whole friendship and how the Rook is always hanging out in Thaddeus's hot tub. I like uh, that Rook calls Jack haircut. Mm -hmm. Did you bring any and other what was the other thing? Goat mouth or something? <laughs> Goat mouth. <laughs> it was like beer with his pants too tight. And, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say tight it's pants. So, it's so funny. It's like, Michael, where did you come up with that? <laughs> I don't know how he comes up with that shit. <laughs> so good. And unexpected. So unexpected. I just think it's of how offended Jack looks about the yeah. He's not <laughs> hurt. Just, I think just, they look yeah. good. Not even offended. He's just, yeah, hurt. just hurt. Well, yeah. my, I, my pants look nice. <laughs> He's all self conscious. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> Rook's taken a lot of shit from that humans makes over me the years. The ranking officer of the immortals by ancient treaty. So he gets a little nasty. You're making a mistake you can't undo. I love Zendara so much. Yeah, me too. I love that she stands up to Kirk in here. I loved her already. She was one of my absolute favorites. But this moment here made me just be like, okay. We can work out the And she's just laying out the facts. She's yeah. not like being mean about it. She's just like, this is how it is. You're on my land. Yeah. <laughs> Damn well, do whatever she wants here. And there's just a vibe of like, you're not who I thought you were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To Kirkin, you know. Which Signal is... the commanders that there's been a change of plans. Please, sir, you can still help us. You're heading into disaster, Jack. The world. That little eyebrow raise she did. Today. Yeah. Um, Kirkin makes you know that she's like a wounded person now. Yeah. Maybe she was already. Like, who knows what happened to that arm? What What's the, the writing in the situation around her arm? Yeah. We know generally what happened, but we don't know how it went down and how that affected her personality. Well, that was a whole thing. That's. Well, I mean, she also spent like Are you doing okay weeks about trapped in Sandrak's ship. But what's done yeah, is like, done he had her so do I call ever since the now, like what? Jack was out, but right? he was unconscious for all that time. time. Yeah, that's and right. She was at Sandrak's so mercy, no magic that whole time. I like, am. so we don't know what you know. You like by the time you see her, they're sitting at a table together, but we don't know how give, I mean, what he did to her to get her to that place, right? Like, you know, they say like mind controlling magic is forbidden, but you think he cares? Right? Like. Who knows what he did there? Keep our scrying that, officers silent that until I get so, That's a yeah. really good point. I totally didn't think about that. They won't know what hit him. But I don't know. Maybe she's just playing her cards. On Sandrak's flagship. My boys will break away and try to dampen whatever Sandrak's spells have got its hooks in the pentacle. I think Orfe's dialogue about the, the time without magic, her time without magic, was I think probably the most interesting. I, Orfe's really, really interesting. But like, there's a bit. She talks about in the end game, where she talks about what it was like not having magic for her. It was really good. This moment is so cool. <laughs> I can't believe they've been living underground. I wanted to see that. Nobody even knew they had wings. Incredible. I like uh, how Thaddeus mentions, I've been waiting forever to see that. Yeah. 
Thaddeus is very wise. I think he knows a lot about how the the world and well, the worlds work. Yeah. He knows more than he lets on. They destroyed us. This is one of my just favorite moments that I've ever seen in any video game. It's so <laughs> epic. Peel like up and hit their flanks. the Open flying the battleships and that. skiffs. The rest of you. The pentasod. The whole thing. <laughs> Yeah, Morton did this is so flash Morton for me. Oh, yeah. dude, that is totally one of the influences wow. very early on. In fact, Zendara's design. Did he really um, just yell? Walk oh, what is her name <laughs> in Flash Gordon? Princess Aurora? Is it Aurora? Oh. Aurelia, maybe? Aurelia, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, I remember, yeah. like, that's, that's one like of the first. Man moment right there. Yeah, Which, totally. Yeah. And just the colors, like if you go watch that movie, it's very vibrant. Um, that is one of the first movies that my dad brought home on VHS. Wow. And that thing permanently stuck into my brain. Um, so I would say that, you know, Immortals is kind of an eclectic visual style. Like it's part Lord of the Rings, part Call of Duty, part Star Wars, part sci-fi. I would lump in Flash Gordon for sure as part of that. Where you're like, in if space, you haven't watched the '80s Flash Gordon movie, you should do it. It's campy, but it's awesome. It's campy, yeah. but it's got soundtrack by Queen. It's amazing. Oh yeah, the soundtrack. And Brian Brian Bellows is the freaking best character. He's so amazing. Yeah. God, I haven't seen that movie in years. Oh, I gotta go watch that. How incredible is this fight? This. Huge battleship that you're on. It's bonkers. Yeah. The pentasod in the background like that. All the Allure flying around. Yeah. The ship battles that are happening outside. Yeah. yeah. This is one of my favorite levels. Yeah. And really... also just the, the VFX are amazing in it because you have so many things going on, but the giant pentasod being like, you know, held back in kind of chains, like magical sigil-like chains, is so cool. Oh, hi, buddy. <laughs> I also like any fight where we get to fight alongside, like, Zendara and yeah. Thaddeus. And just oh, that them. is so good. I Shrine Forge, is that the first place where that happens? I think, yep. yeah, yep. I think so. Yeah, yep, that's the first one. Such, I got so happy when I saw Devin yeah. and Zendara run around kicking butt. It was so awesome. Zara, don't you? Okay. This is just so cool. Like, I just want to stand around looking at it all. <laughs> well, you have. You have like a bunch of Magni with you also, so it's yeah. not just Zendara fighting, there's also yeah. like a blue and green Magni set and they're blasting away. Uh, oh, One like of my favorite like designs that you don't really get up close to and see too well is the green, the uh, Lucian Green Magnus. That costume was designed by a guy named Davide Hagin. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's super cool. That's a really nice question. Uh, there's, I like the posters and different things decorating Saren. Feel like they hint at plays and such that people interact with. What was your thought process for decorating the environment? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I mean, Julia, do you want to speak to that? It's it's really just about world building and making the world feel better. Oh, yeah. Well, um, yes, Saren, making posters for Saren was really fun because we were trying to sort of distinguish the the Serenites, you know, the, the people who live in the Underbridge as, you know, they don't really see themselves as part of, of Lucium. And so there's actually um, a, a very, like, class division on the bridge itself, where there's the, 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 like, overstory, where the people, all the rich people could afford to live up there on the actual surface of the bridge. And then there's all of the, the ones living below. And so a lot of the graffiti and, um, and the posters and stuff have, like allusions to that where it'll be kind of the subtle rebellion that suggests maybe something's brewing between the the underbridge and the, the overstory um and so we just kind of like leaned into that to give 
Saren its own really distinct identity. Like all the, the characters that live there aren't just your standard people that you come across in Lucian. They're in a living in a very dangerous spot that's all, you know, it's, it's slums. It's very, um, they're all bedraggled and they don't have a lot of money, but they still have a lot of fierce pride. And so you can go around and see, um, we went and designed like a whole bunch of symbols and graffiti to suggest the underbridge and then like a different color palette. Like all the sort of red graffiti is definitely just, you know, the street urchins going around trying to stick it to the, the man, or basically the rich people um, who have their own distinct like banners and colors, like they're more blue. And um, on their posters, it's a very like classic view of the bridge itself, almost kind of looks like the Golden Gate Bridge. But you'll come across just environmental storytelling moments where like there'll be those banners and, and posters around the, the rich mansions and then you'll see the the graffiti that's kind of scrawled on top of it and like the posters and things. Um, and yeah, we even like had a concept artist come up with a bunch of different poster designs for, um, for theater productions, you know, for plays and, and musicals um, just to, because you start the entire game kind of looking down into a theater. And so um, we had them come up with a bunch of just crazy ideas um, that, that we kind of plastered around advertising style in Saren um, and, and kind of across the, the world of Lucium itself. Well, to to help uh, immersion also, because you start the game basically watching a play about mm -hmm. one of the battles at Sandrak, you know, when he was conquering Kalthus. Um, so you start there and we're so we're watching a play so it was it just made sense for a play to happen in Saren. there would be advertisements for and around around the place and you know uh i thought that was really cool and then there's also mm -hmm. of course um recruitment po posters for the lights army and the immortal propaganda posters for the immortals and stuff like that so yeah there are also a bunch of wanted posters that are all the images of the art team <laughs> uh, who yeah. wanted to participate. We kind of like had them send some screenshots of themselves, and then they, we kind of turned them into yeah wanted posters that are in pen and ink. So just and if you ones. if you look at all the posters, um, I can't say it's a hundred percent accurate, but we did our best to kind of like um, put all the text in Lucian or whatever mm -hmm. the poster is. So they actually do have an alphabet and it, it does spell things out. Um, hopefully I don't get myself into trouble there. Like we may have missed a few. Yeah, but I think most, I think we got close to all of them. You can yeah. translate them. Yeah. We won't tell you how. <laughs> okay, I have to there, might be a, oh. there might be a hint in the art book, maybe. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I have to switch. This is the only problem that I have is that certain things just are not um, fast enough. Uh, is that? There we go. Uh, going this way. This is so cool. I'm happy we got to this point. Even though it means the game is almost over. But like, look at this. You're on a giant flying space whale. Yeah. <laughs> over a wound looking at a giant god who's being attacked he's been pulled from another side, dimension but... right yeah yeah, yeah sandrax pulling the penison into the um god brain fart what do we call this realm the shrouded? shrouded realm and then there's the what is avium material realm that's what oh. we I don't know if that's official, but that's what we call it while we're making it the material world. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's actually referenced like directly in, in the dialogue. But... 
Whoa. Like, literally, there are flying things all around us, and we're flying. It's just, it's incredible. I think if I had to pick a favorite part, it would probably be this, even though, like, I love the Shrouded Realm so much. But, like, look at where we are. It's just wild. These last poor couple of archers and <laughs> <Yeah>. sword guys. <laughs> You're like, you, you guys could probably just jump off. <laughs> You're gonna die, sorry. <laughs> There's that part uh, in Saren where uh, you don't have your powers and the swordsmen are kind of bullying you and it's just every time in my head I'm like oh how many of you I've killed like <laughs> <laughs> like I've turned so many of you and it just piles of stuff when you when you got your gear back did you go looking for them no I don't think you can <laughs> that'd be great though did you at least think about it oh yeah I mean <laughs> of course that's a great, like, his, uh, stare at the ground, like, voice line is very, cause, like, it's funny because, uh, Rasharnian is kind of a very, like, fluid language, and so when he switches languages, it's like, his voice changes really aggressive, it's pretty fun, because they're very taunting when they're talking to Luna. And Ah. That was not what I meant to do. <laughs> there. Tricky fights. Tricky fights, but good ones. Sometimes I miss. <laughs> the Red Magnite are so cool. Ah. With their like kung fu that shoots fire. Yeah. Like the animation on those just really uh they just really turned it up. It was like it was one of the last enemies we made, I think. Was Red Magnus? Because the Magni were definitely late. The Green Magnus was early, but the Red Magnus, I think, was one of the very last standard enemies that we made. And, you know, we had uh, we had some cool ideas for it, but then I think so much of how they came out just came out of the animation team, just being like, here's these animations, and, like, you know, we're going to make powers to go for them. And they were just so much more expressive with the like the kick the flip kicks and the spins and the everything they did that just really um you know uh you know like and then you know, we have this uh, fantastic designer patrick uh Jal Jal bear who was uh really did a lot of our ai like he really made our ai uh combat behavior just fantastic he turned everything up when he joined the team and uh, he definitely was like, I have so many, like, that was one of those things working on the Red Bagness where uh, it was like, I need more features. I need more features. I want to do this thing. I need more features. I need him to be able to do this, like, multiple zigzags that, fl that are fluid and feel great. And it was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> because he was, like, our big last one that we did. And it was, um, I love him. I, lo I love the way they, they fight. Oh, you might have to switch sigils. Yeah, I might. Nope. 
You're out of range for the red one. Uh. There we go. Uh, any uh, neat anecdotes about enemies, animals running around Avium that ended up in the scrap pile due to time or technical reasons? Um, oh, there was one. Oh, I wonder if it's still there. <laughs> there was one animal left. Like this is one of the things I was talking about when you when you're making a game, you have to scope things out to make sure the team focuses on the things that really, really matter. Make sure everything gets to the reality there. There's, some, there's a lot of noise going on there. Who's that? Um, so unfortunately, our our animals were some of some of those consequences. Uh, but we thought we had removed we thought we had removed them all. But we found one lone rat in Lucium that a little boy was playing with. Uh, oh. it, was just it was just running in circles and he was kind of doing something with it yeah we used to have like a lot more of the rats just sort of skirming around places and you know, all through like lucium and in saren we had you know some this this cool uh deer creature that we called the baru that had like um this really crazy stag appearance and those actually are still in the main menu. If you just sit in the main menu for a little bit and you're looking across the water, there'll be like a little herd family of deer that, you know, cross, <laughs> cross back there. But unfortunately we had to remove a lot just due to, I mean, they were AI and that was very expensive, particularly with all the other combat spaces. Well, and it was causing, it was causing issues with yeah. Empire and such as well. I admit you're and I think immersion issues too, because there's always the, coming. you know, Children do you allow the player to kill ambient and life or NPCs or, mm. it, you know, it's more complicated than, there's just, there's a lot of things a to be considered when throwing stuff like that into the game and how, how much attention it needs. After all you have seen, you do you guys think that the technology will eventually get to a point where you can just do all kinds of crazy stuff like that without worrying about performance so much? No. Yeah, we're always going to push it um, as hard as we can. I think at some, at some level, uh, every time the technology gets better, it just means we're going to try to push it harder. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're going to be playing in a virtual world with holograms or something. Yeah. So. I mean, just from a practical standpoint, games are wonderful for doing hand wavy -um and hidey nest. Yeah. But, you know, like, getting actual real cloth skinning on all of your clothing and being able to swap clothing to anything and it actually fits the models correctly is if you were buying it off a store rack. Like, we're nowhere near that. That's that's not even remotely how assets like that work in a video game. But it will be at some point and that's still going to be super expensive and you're still going to be limited to how many of those you can have on screen because it's expensive that's that's always been the race is every time technology advances we look at the things we're doing that are fake and we go well let's do lights for real this time let's do audio echoing for real this time and we use up all that capacity i mean real-time ray tracing is a thing in so many games now and for you know the like ray tracing has been around for a long time, but it was never something that you could do in real time, you know, and now, now they're just running it on chips. And we'll we'll keep pushing. Always. Should I fall, Avian will follow. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff out there in that vista.
You disgust me, malevolent spirit. I will erase your names from all memory. Uh, yep, you're in the right spot. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Can you hear it, Jack? Wait. In all of its varied hues of panic, the realization that even immortality is fleeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, the traitor returned at last. You dishonor everything I gave you, sister. I love that she does up for this. You're so full of shit. You sold our people a dream you abandoned the moment I handed you the power to fulfill it. <clears throat> you don't always have to wait until I'm on the ropes to swoop in, you know. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Always on the ropes. Do you know how many Lucians she's killed, Jack? And you, sister. How many of your countrymen have died at his hand? Rip. Oh, no, no. Von Titor. I want to die. No! Oh. This fight is really tough. Do you know how many Lucians she's killed, Jack? And you, sister. How many of your countrymen have died at his hand? There is no grace in your magic, no skill. How? Seren must breed oathbreakers and half. I should have let it in. Get behind me. Ah. Where are you? Oh, crap. Um. Get behind my shield. I am warded against your power, creature. <laughs> Von Titor. Let me do the thing, please. Vigas! Not doing any damage. God, I'm gonna die. There's no health anywhere, is there? Uh, wait. Uh, every time you s break his shield, he should drop some. Vigious. Get behind me. I need the health. Rada Kull, I resist you. Oh God. With my own will, I resist you. Why can't I do it? Zata missed. Von T toy. Oh. No. Oh my god. Um. Need health, please. 
Sorry guys, I'm a little bit focus mode at the moment. Yeah, hey, there's a good question for you there, Super. Yeah, are there any particular moments related no. to combat dev where you thought, I'm so glad we got this working, or you figured something out? I think the the one where you're you're hovering and then you uh, you punch downward was a good one. Yeah, I'm. I think Bash Bash is definitely. Uh, wow, you're really not you supposed to be rewriting code killed, that late in development. Um, <laughs> and the game came out in August, and I want to say I rewrote Jesus. Bash in May, um, and it was like. Uh, should have been a lesson to you. It had just been sat there as like this thing that I'll get to it when I get to it for way too long. And I think one of the things was there was a bug that made it um, so that it didn't matter how fast your frame rate was, you wouldn't be more than 30 frames per second when you did bash because of the animation, the way it was done. It was an animation code thing. And, but we didn't know that was a problem until the game was faster than 30 frames per second and that didn't happen for a long time. So uh, I didn't realize how bad it was until the game was running at 30, 60 frames per second pretty consistently. Me. And then I was like, oh, this, this is bad. Like, I feel so jerky, janky. Um, but then, you know, it's funny because uh, I, I ended up doing a full rewrite of the way the ability worked. Um, bringing it out of blueprints in C++ and adding um, a bunch of like little hidden tweaks to make it feel better. Uh, so it could go up and down stairs, you could like downward dive punch. Um, it can like, you can hit guys on ledges if you have targets. Full, full on rewrite. And I remember that oh, no. it went, it went from uh, Brett's least favorite ability to Brett's favorite ability overnight. Um, and that was like, that was really a big deal for me of being like, oh, you know, this is the ability Brett never used, and now it's his favorite ability. And for me, it was like, I was so glad, and it was so last minute, but it, I, it's my favorite part of the game now. It's my favorite ability. Um. Unfortunately, I got to leave the stream, but good luck, Tess. Thank you, can you Julia. Stand back. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for all your questions and support for the game. We hope you guys all get to play it and uh, enjoy it and tell people about it. Uh, thank you so, so much for hanging out. See you, and Julia. All your insights and all the beautifulness. Indy says hi, too. Oh. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. Well. I failed to do two things at once very well right now. <laughs> Sata missed you. Oh no! Damn it. I am having the hardest time. I'm so sorry. Okay, I need a tiny, tiny AFK, and <coughs> then I'll be back, and then we're gonna do this. Do you know how many Lucians she's I'm gonna have to pause it because otherwise he's just gonna kill me over and over. I apologize. I'll be right back. <laughs> I feel like people are starting to get to know me all of a sudden. <laughs> we know you too well. <clears throat> 
I'm not really a fan of rules and things like that. So that's surprising. I missed something entertaining. Uh, the, the, um, just some, we were laughing about people in the, one of the YouTube chats are trying to get Mark to share, share things. Oh. They're, they're, they're enticing Mark to be. <clears throat> I see, I see. <laughs> I hear Mark likes wine. Jack, I need sister. <laughs> How many of your countrymen? You may need to bribe him. That is true. I do have a wine cellar. <laughs> my my two and one of my two indulgences. Have died at his hand. That's so cool. Von Detour. Oh my god, how do you avoid that? Because I never can. Which one? Dash his... then hover. Dash then hover. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. The red one is the really hard one to avoid. Man, it really yeah. comes at you fast. Yeah. Okay. Do you know how many Lucians she's killed, Jack? And you, sister. How many of your countrymen have died at his hand? Van Detour. Okay, okay. That definitely works better. Vijay! Damn it. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna have to sit back down. I yeah, stood this, up. This my... is ridiculous. Yeah, it's really tough. It was definitely really tough the first time too. But it's it's tougher this time. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I want to be standing, but just being in a slightly different position with muscle memory is like confusing to my brain. <laughs> I can do this. I can do this. Do you know how many Lucians she's killed, Jack? And you, sister. How many of your countrymen have died at his hand? Van Titoy. That. Both of you betray your masters for what? A chance at power? And then which of you will betray the other? Oh. Get behind my shield! Who's he? Oh god. Not good, not good. Vantitor. You were unforeseen, I can tell. I am warded against your power, creature. Me. You disgust me, malevolent spirit. I will erase your names from all memory. Get behind my shield. one the amount of times i use the wrong fury is wild Sata Vanti toy. Ha. 
Seren must breed Oathbreakers and Halfwits. I should have leveled it. Get ah. behind me! Touch me. Really? Care about that? <laughs> Vantito. No, Sia should have been a lesson to you. Damn it! Um... Oh, please? Oh my god. No! Stop moving, you big jerk! Rada Kull, I resist you. With my own will, I resist you. Sorry, I'm super quiet, you guys, because I'm just super focused mode. You disgust me, malevolent spirit. I will erase your name from shield. all my. Oh, what a jerk. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> you get the shield down, and then the Benathod's like, nope. Yep. Nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna yell now. Yep. Uh. And then he gives his timer up on his shield. So yep. Like, uh, oh no! Like you're not helping, Penasad. I know you think you're helping. But yeah. You're not. Bash him! You betray your masters for what? Uh, A chance at power. Oh and then God. which of you will betray the I other? If my get now. behind me. Oh, yeah. Jerkin knew that joining me was the only answer. Get you behind my her shield. name and her station. You dishonor the Pentacide, please. Oh, no, go, go. Paradise. The Pentacide has you under its hold, boy. Come Resist on. It. Ah, oh, thank God. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, that is so satisfying. <laughs> Enough. You mistake me for someone that has... I'm sorry, that took me quite a few tries. I am the wellspring of magic. The very... Ah! Remember that time we pulled one over on the Upbridge gang? I guess. I'm saying literally remember the time we pulled one over on the Upbridge gang. Enough. No. It's finally time to end your suffering. What? Nice. Ah. Ah. Hi, silly bad guy. <laughs> oh, that's another really good question. When making an this area like Orman's Library, pretending. did you go through a lot of steps to get an idea of what it was like before and after all the destruction and metal slime stuff? That is a great question. Oh, Julia's gone. She's probably the best oh, person to answer yeah, that one. Palathon. 
and Saren. Uh, unfortunately. And, what was uh, the question? Fuck, so did you, uh, when oh. making an area like Oriman's library, oh, did you go Maladar. through a lot of steps to get an right. idea of what it was like before <coughs> and after Maladar. all the destruction and no, metal slime stuff? Literally, so like, did you design it destroyed or do you design it how it was meant to be It'll and work. then destroy it? Right? Hmm. That is a good question. I think a little bit of both. Like, I'm trying to remember back to the concept art. We were working Damn, with uh, an amazing artist from bust. Italy named George Armando Savoia. I'm pretty sure corruption was in the concept as well. And the library was, you know, obviously it was an old, old building made a long time ago. Um, so we were supposed to portray the age of it, the emptiness of it, and the only inhabitants were the, the chroniclers. Um, and at some point they, they went kind of bonkers and started vomiting up this metal memories, which kind of is all over the place. So I think probably from the very beginning it was kind of designed to look like that. I remember the original pitch for what we were wanted to do with uh, the library was way, way crazier than what we ended up with. Like we were going to have the wings like separate, like you had to get to them from a ley line, and then like when you finish the puzzle they would like move back and like reconnect. And we just, from a technical standpoint, it was just too much. But it was like, it was this really cool pitch. And then we were like, okay, we have to simplify that one a little bit. It's like, you can't put that much. Um, it's my favorite level. Uh, I mean, the Colossus is amazing too, but uh, I feel like the puzzles in that level are the most like, like they, they hit just right, especially like the platforming puzzles inside and all the, the exploration. You know, you've just gotten uh, the ability to ride the ley lines, and then it's like an integral part of that level. And there's so many like, oh, I jump off the ley line here, and there's a secret. And there's like, I lash around, and um, you know, uh, it was the perfect jungle gym to take that new ability of grapple that you've just gotten, and just like the whole level kind of hinges around using it well. And I think that's um, it's yeah, it, I really love that level, and plus the chroniclers. Their design is just so cool. Yeah. Uh, cool bit of lore about Orman, um, or the library, is that the library actually was built and existed on the ground. And really? Yes. Uh, all these floating islands are basically um, an after effect of a massive magic, like nuke level magic bomb war happening. Uh, in AVM's past. So the Ever War has been going on forever. And that's that's kind of the reason that the Ormic Islands are all you know flying around in the air. <laughs> if you if you point the camera down and you can see through the dust at the ground, you would see massive craters all over Ormond. Oh big big beautiful spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. And then we're good to see all of our names. Yeah. So cool. What a journey yeah. it has been. Yeah. To make this. In five years for a lot of you guys. Two or three for some. Yeah. Well, started here. It's crazy how many like genius beautiful creative minds both on the art side and the tech side and the story side and just every part of this game even the marketing side um have come together to put this incredible incredible experience out for people to enjoy you know there are so many video games out there and every single one of them has so much love poured into it i i can't imagine any creative person working on any creative thing and not pouring love into it but this one in particular just really the love that everyone has poured into it is unreal it shows let's mark up too I 
<laughs> like everyone's head snapped over like hmm. yeah mark says he doesn't like rules he does like rules <laughs> just for other people though <laughs> there are rules for code reviews that's about you know check-ins things like that he needs rules yes you do <laughs> they're more guidelines really running amok and causing trouble refusing to believe he's really dead you got any loot yeah I, I might be the bad rebel who's constantly threatening to put up steam betas just to let you guys see stuff we're working on <laughs> we're starting with back to the front we'll take advantage of that time and try to rebuild and uh under your leadership i take it you have an opinion i i what i like to tell people is imagine the thing yeah. you probably really want and we're probably working on that yeah it should be is really like really the devs see all the things like oh, they might not always comment totally sure. um sure. but even the things they don't see any fun thing that you guys have put on social media or in discord i see and my team sees and we tell the devs so trust me if you've put it out there in the world they know about it and they also have come up with similar or or the same things like every cool thing like super said if you want it in the game they want it in the game too this banter at the end. Yeah, it's so good. Maybe we should just try it, you know? I healed the wound. So good. Oh. This game is amazing. It's it's a joy um, to play and it's a joy to get to share it with you guys and to get to facilitate the conversation between the devs and all of you watching uh, on Twitch, on YouTube, wherever you're watching this. Thank you so much for being a part of our stream today. Thank you so, so much for trying the game. If you haven't tried it already, definitely feel free to check out the free trials on consoles or the free PC demo on Steam. The PC demo on Steam, all you need to do is go find Immortals of Avium, their store page, and just scroll down. You'll see it's a big green bar that says download. That's the free demo. And at the end of both the free demo and the two free trials on Xbox and PlayStation, there's an extra bonus discount. So if you like the demo, if you like how the gameplay is or the story or the world or all of the above, and you want more, you can always get the full game. Um, and if you want more cool stuff from the studio, more avium adventures or adventures in avium tell your friends about the game make sure they try it you don't have to convince them to love it they can decide that on their own but just convince people to try it <laughs> all right i'm gonna sign out here also thank you so much everybody um for coming and your questions and loving the game uh, have a great day uh, because I love Tess so much, I'm going to hang out and watch her play the entire New Game Plus. <laughs> <laughs> I could get talked into doing that. <laughs> Technically, this was New Game Plus, so I'd have to do New Game, New Game Plus Game Plus. plus. <laughs> but maybe not today. Thank you so, so much, Mark and Bogan and Super, and huge thanks to Julia and huge thanks to Jason and everybody that's joined over the few streams that we've gotten to do. It's been so fun having you guys on. I just stop by anytime, <laughs> literally. Um, it's really great to facilitate the conversation, be a part of it, and show off the game while you guys talk about it. It's just a, it's the best experience. So thank you. And thank you to all the viewers. Thank you to all the players. You guys are awesome. Um, yes, so thanks to all the fans and all, to all the new people giving us a chance and trying the game out. We yeah. really appreciate it. Yeah. We'll see and you love guys talking around. with you. It means yeah. the world, though. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you guys around. Follow our socials. They're all in the video description for YouTube. And I have an exclamation mark ASC command in Twitch. Um, you could just find us at Google Ascendant Studios or Immortals of Avium, and you'll find our Twitter, TikTok, threads. Instagram, Discord, I feel like I missed one, but basically every platform that exists, we're on it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.